my first month, sixty-six thousand dollars in, in in orders and like revenue, multiple seven figures at like sixteen, seventeen. I couldn't buy anything. All right, what's up, guys? I am here. This is my first ever long format video, and we we're just free balling. I have like loose points written down, but I'm here with my friend Caleb Canales. And before we get into learning about this man, I'll give the brief explanation. It was the first time we met with Levi? Is it when we went to that game place main event? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, it was. So randomly, my buddy Levi Mack, back when he lived here, hit me up and was like, come to main event. It's just like a, it's like a Chuck E. Cheese, but for grownups. Um, and I met Caleb, didn't know anything about him. All I knew was that bro drove a bright blue Supra. And I was like, okay, well, I was like, I didn't actually think this, but oh, daddy's money. <laughs> but afterwards, we went, I think we went, we went to Mod Pizza and we're going and we're leaving. And he has like, a trunk and his super trunk full of supplements and there was one brand that I like recognized like oh shit, like this was from my hometown supplement store like I, w I took like one of these products like the pump product or whatever and he's like oh yeah like I'm actually a part of like this company in the supplement industry and that's when I was like oh this boy doing something this boy doing something that I got to learn about so if you had to give a brief elevator pitch to someone to like kind of give them an insight of who you are what would you say I would say that I own a marketing agency just like in layman's terms, that's really all, all okay, I can say. Okay, Amon Well, no, so I mean, I do a lot of things. Like my ma my biggest thing is like, I just don't want to fail. And so I just get scared sometimes. Like I just have the scarcity mindset of I just have to continue working. And I feel like if I'm not just working on then I'm failing. And so whether it's with watches, whether it's wholesaling cars, whether it's just selling shoes, selling luxury items, marketing, or mar my marketing agency, dropshipping stores, literally whatever it is, I just... I have that mindset of I just can't, I can't fail. So what I'm hearing is you're an e-commerce like guru. You have like a bunch of I don't want to be called a businesses. guru. I just want to be called an marketing agency owner because there's too much stigma around gurus in the agent in, in the space that I'm at at least. All right. Well, Caleb's being pretty modest. I'm gonna be honest. Caleb, I know Caleb got bags because I've seen numbers and also. What are you driving right now? Uh, M5 competition? It's my 2019 M5 competition. 2019 M5 competition. He still has his Supra. Uh, what cars have you had in the past? I bought five Tesla Plaids this year, but only because the market was going crazy. And so I could make, I could buy those and then sell those for $10,000 over. And that's basically me making 10 grand off each car. So you, you flip cars is like one of your, one of your many side hustles. Yeah, exotic cars. Exotic cars. Yeah. Only cool cars. Yeah. You, you ain't, bro, I ain't flipping no Priuses. No, but I could probably. Okay. So one thing that I'm going to point out is that you're only 18 years old. And you have, is that an AP on right it now? Isn't, yeah. You have an AP. You're driving around in an M5 competition. You live in a nice S apartment downtown Houston. I've seen, I've seen numbers on your phone. Um, what, what's like the brief story? How, how, you're 18 years old and you have all this money. Like, is your, is your dad rich? Like, what's going on here? No. And like, I didn't come from money. My, my mom doesn't work, but that doesn't mean that my dad has money. He's just, he didn't come from money either. And so, it's his big thing is like he just doesn't want to fail either. He just wants to provide for like his family and just give him the best that he can. And so he he made sure that my my mom didn't work that way. She could have a good life. And my mom didn't come from much. Her her dad like he is a pastor of a church of like ten people. So you would say you have like a pretty typical upbringing. No, no fancy Golden Gates. No Ferraris in the driveway. Just no. normal normal white kid life. Uh, you grew up in. Pearland, Texas? Friendswood, Texas. I grew up in Friendswood, okay, Texas. Friendswood. A family of five. Um, I mean, I went to public school. I'd say that my family is like about middle, middle class, but that was just normal for the city that I live in. Yeah. I mean, I know what goes on inside my family. And I mean, obviously there's other stuff that goes on outside of other families, but I'd say that I'm like just typical middle class for my family. Okay. And I mean, you're already 18 and you have all this. What, what age did, because one thing I've noticed about you and from talking with you is both you got into fitness at a very young age, uncommon for uh, that time. Cause now like with TikTok and stuff, there's 12 year olds doing fucking ziz poses and shit on TikTok. But back then it's a little more unheard of. What year did you start lifting? So I started lifting pretty early on. It was mixed between gymnastics and baseball. Most of you don't even know that I played baseball, but like I'm, I'm tall people are like, Oh, you're a pitcher. You're a third baseman. And I was like, yeah, I was. And so we would have like weight room days for that. And then for gymnastics, it was just more intense training, like calisthenics training. And so whenever I quit gymnastics, I just got into strictly just calisthenics. I was like 12, 13. And then from there, well, actually, no, I didn't quit gymnastics. Actually, I broke both my ankles or broke both oh. my heels. So I, I shattered both my growth plates. At the same time? One a week after the other. Oh, my gosh. And bro. so the funny thing is 
breaking my second one, my, my second heel, like the growth in my heel, I fell on stairs at my school because I had a boot on. Oh. Nobody knows that. I'm actually saying that for the first time, but nobody knows hey. that. But my first time was I was attempting a double backflip on a trampoline. And I mean, I've done thousands before. Yeah. And then whenever I landed, I was going for another one. And then after that one, I kind of bailed. And then my foot, or I guess my heel, smacked on the rail of the trampoline. Oh. And so that just shattered the growth plate. That was the first time. And then I fell on the stairs, which I didn't tell anybody. I just walked out of school. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm good. Like, nothing happened. It was, it was a second story stairs, too. So oh. it was pretty long. Just no one was around? No one caught it? No, I think there was one person around. But okay. I was like, nah, I'm just, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> it was just a goof, guys. No, it looks like you just broke your foot. No, like it, it's a meme. Like I'm for trust, trust. <laughs> but just sideways, like no, that's no, cool. If you do double back flips, I was only able to do a front flip on the trampoline because back flips scare me. Because I just imagine landing and just. <laughs> I'll tell you now that if I do a back flip, it's actually like less scary than a front flip. I'm scared of front flips now. Can you do like flat on ground back flips? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. Okay, well we might have to do that for okay, the potter. I can do that. Um, so when. You got into fitness young. Was that around the same age you were like, I want to make money? Because like for most kids, like that's not it. For, even for me, that wasn't a concern for a long time. Like I was into YouTube at a young age, but I thought it was cool that I was getting like a couple cents per video on my gaming videos. I didn't give a fuck about it. I didn't have any entrepreneur goals up until like the past like year maybe. So for you to start at such a young age, what did that look like at the beginning? Were you selling candy out your backpack in kindergarten? or? So the first thing I did is I started selling shoes. I got into reselling. It was just like maybe one or two pairs at a time. What age is this? Like 11 or 12-ish. Oh, wow. And so I, I would just sell an offer up or like, um, I can't think of the, or no, offer up and let go. Mm. It was those two and then I got in back to Facebook Marketplace. But then it just got into like a lot of scams. So I kind of got out of that. You ever, you ever sell dupes? No, no. Nice. I wouldn't get into that. Good just man. Because like the legality around it. Mm-hmm. And because if you're selling to a cop, like that's fraud. And yeah. so you're kind of screwed. And I wouldn't doubt if there's just cops on like Facebook Marketplace, just like, oh, what are you doing, bud? Like, and you just get caught like that. So I wouldn't get into that. So and started with shoes. What made you, were you just into shoes at the time? And you're like, oh, shoes are cool. I like getting shoes. I could resell these and make money. And then that's how, what kind of the snowball started. Yeah. So I was already saving money from like birthdays and stuff that I had. I would like host big birthday parties because I... I consider myself like the popular kid in school, and that was only like a little bit. Oh, that was like the popular kid, and so That's I'd crazy, have, bro, I would have like big birthday parties, like 30, 40 people that would join, and so I'd get like anywhere from twenty to forty bucks. So, at that time, I was already in that business mindset. I was like, okay, how much money can I make? Yeah. But still, like I had a lot of friends that I knew that would join, and so I think I made like eight hundred bucks for a birthday party, and so I would use that money, and like my, my parents would, would give me money too, and uh, we'd figure something out to have like a cheap birthday party, but still like. It make money for bro's, me. Bro's leaving his birthday party with a cool rack. Like, all yeah, right. And I have photos of me, like, holding the money after I open, like, all That's the gifts fire. and stuff. That's fire. If you, if you still have them, send them to me so I can put them on the screen. I'm sure my mom can find them, yeah. That's fucking funny. So, shoes was, like, the main thing that got you into, like, offer up, uh, let go, things like that. Mm-hmm. When did it turn into, what was the next step from there? Because clearly, eventually, like, you're, you're, you're not still reselling shoes right now, as far as I know. Mm-hmm. What was the next step from that? Was it drop shipping? It was YouTube. Okay, was you right? Because yeah. he did have a YouTube channel. I've yeah. seen his old and videos. So I think at the time that I started my YouTube channel, not started, but whenever I was posting, that's when I got into like drop shipping. And people ask me like all the time, like, how did you get started in drop shipping? Like, I'm honestly like, I just wanted to find another way to, that I can make money. And I saw a Shopify ad. It wasn't from anybody else because there was nobody really in, in the space. It was all just brand new people. Mm. So then with, with like fitness industry, I was like one of the first of like the, the next gen at, in, in like the in the space. And so. I consider myself like a dropshipper, like, or I guess like an OG e-commerce guy. Yeah. Because I started like so long ago, like five or six years at this point. And so I just saw like a Shopify ad. That's like ad. Prime, prime time oh, to get dude, into I that know, too. Yeah. So I saw like an ad. And I was like, okay, what is this? And then literally as soon as I saw that ad, I started a free trial. It was like 30 days at the time, free trial. And it was a lot cheaper uh, monthly, I'm pretty sure. And so I did that. And then I just like, I, there was other tools that I could use. And I was like, how can I find what's winning? Like, how can I find what's selling? And I like look on like just different tools on, on Google that I always find. And then I was like, I'd find ads buy and then I'd find other tools that would tell me like, hey, this product is selling, this person's selling ads or promoting ads on this product. And it would just kind of keep going on like that. And so, so you I would kind of find things like this product, you you would, you already knew it was a winning product and you just took it and used it on your so store and I just kind of advertised it better. I didn't know that it was a winning better. product. I think that it was because I feel like if most stores are running ads on a product, it's probably going to be a winning product. Yeah. I would go off the stores that have like a lot of comments, a lot of like 
uh, likes and reshares on their post because then I thought, okay, if that's getting good traction, they're either spending a lot of money or they're just selling the, the product a lot. And so I wouldn't necessarily use those products, but I would use something that's called like an evergreen product. So a product like, let's say, toothbrushes or like toothpaste yeah. or combs or just stuff in like with an area that people have to buy on a recurring basis. Yeah, it's basis. not a trend. It's not a, it's not a reversible octopus or a little flyer guy that frisbee or like boomerangs around and comes back to you. These are like things that someone, there will always be a demand. Subscription-based products, yes. So Subscription-based. That, yeah, that would always be in, a, in like a, just you got to buy every 30 days or every 20 days. And that's also got into supplements, but I'll touch on that on a, on a later date. And so... I started selling, I, I don't remember what I sold at first. To be you don't honest. remember your first couple products? I genuinely don't. Were I you, can go back on my phone. Was it instant, like, started hitting, or was it you had to go through a lot of products, spend money on ads before you saw, like, the silver lining? I hate saying this, but it was instant. <sighs> my, same, I, my first month, I, I'm pretty sure I can show you the numbers after this. I have every, I screenshots everything, but it was $66,000 in, in, in orders and, like, revenue. And so that was, like, 1,307 orders. I don't remember exactly what I sold. Um, I'm sure I can find my Shopify account, but I, I do sell stores. So after one or two years, after they're profitable, I have buyers that like, will buy them off yeah. of you. And so they buy them at a 3x multiplier of the revenue that you get. So I'm sure I can find my stuff. I have stuff from like the past three years that I still have, but past like five or six years, like the, the old, old stuff, I don't think I can find that stuff. Okay. So, and I, I'm assuming drop shipping, you were pr clearly pretty successful. So you did that for a couple of years, I'm guessing. So I haven't stopped doing that. I yes. still have job shooting my stores. Yes. But yeah, I was doing that, I'd say, from 2017 to 2019. That's whenever it was, like, really getting That was the heyday. It. And then 2020 hit, and it went from, like, make me making – it was, like, making me money, a lot of money, way more money than any, like, 13, 14, 15, 16-year-old should have. Mm -hmm. And then it was, like, 2020 was, like, dude, I'll be making, like, like how, in like, a day. Like, how much money? 80000 a day. As – a, what 16 17 year old that was like 2020 so it, march 16. was like the peak and so i just got out of school in 2020 march and i was like back on and off with school i was like in seventh grade i was homeschooled until eighth grade and then from freshman year went to freshman year sophomore year i discontinued at, at some point and i think that was like the covid year and then i graduated like soon after that and so actually i think i stopped sophomore year around like October, November. So this time, okay. then I went to homeschool and I just cheated on my stuff at that point. Right. Cause you graduated early. Yeah. Yeah. A, re a year early. Okay. And so 2020 March was like my prime and I mean, it's still crushing it now, but I was selling like, um, detachable chargers. So you would have like a little port or a little, like USB. the magnetic that, that can stay in there. Mm -hmm. And then the charger just, it's kind of like when MagSafe was really yeah. the magnetic MagSafe. It was stupid. But it worked, and the, the cables cool that I had, like, the cables lit up, and, like, they were braided. They were, they were really nice cables. Yeah. And so I sold those, and then I got into, actually, before that, 2019, I had built out a store for Galaxy Lights. And so mm -hmm. I was, like, one of the first, and actually, I can show you the meme page. I don't know if I showed you before, but I can still no, show you the meme, the meme page, page, the ad from 2020 or 2019 of me. It was, like, I was literally one of the first people to, to, to sell that product. Little Galaxy Light that you put on your floor. And it just shows like little like yeah, blue lights. Like stars my, little, and stuff. my little brother has I was one right of the now. first. And Damn. those are those are popping. I know that I was one of the first because there's a little app called Koala Apps that I use for Shopify to see like different themes that people are using, how much like tr store traffic they're getting. And it shows whenever they added these certain products. And I had my dates and then they had their dates. My dates were the first like that was even that I even saw. That's crazy. And so that really took off. Yeah. And that was before I really tried to get into like big time paid marketing and like just putting a lot of money into it. But these stores that I had and I had water bottles, like the whole hydro flask uh, thing that was trending, I sold like not knockoffs, but it was like a, a thing similar to that. Yeah. And then. And that was good. Cause I remember hydro flask, like it was so everyone's like, Whoa, it stays cold for 24 hours. And then like only hydro flask at first, but then you see, Oh, other companies can do the exact same tech and sell it for way less. Cause mm -hmm. hydro flask was fucking taxing. Yeah. Yeah. Now they were expensive, but luckily like, in 2020, everybody was on their phone. They're all ordering something on Amazon or somewhere else. They weren't going to stores. And so it was like the perfect time for me because I had already all this experience from Facebook ads, Google ads, no TikTok ads at the time because I don't think it was TikTok at the time. I think it was so musically. They were like transitioning like 2019, 2020, I think. Right. I forget that TikTok was musically. Yeah. 
oh, that's a it's mind really fuck, yeah. bro. That's weird to think about. It feels about. like it's been around for a while already. So what was, because you're saying like you kind of off the bat had straight up success. So you made your first couple stores. What was your main, was it Facebook ads to start? Or what was the first way that you were getting eyes on your stores? Theme pages. So Okay, so Instagram theme yeah, pages. Yeah, I would build out just like stupid meme pages. And I would also buy and sell them too. So if I built one out, I'd probably sell it. Or one thing that, and I, I've heard this on the podcast, but people say this, like they would have a theme page that they would build it out and they would basically know like what's selling because people that would message those theme pages like, hey, here's a 24 hour like promo post, like I'll pay like 200 bucks for this. Yeah. And so they would see what's selling and that was something that I also did. And so I would have these theme pages and just like meme pages that were just stupid. You grow them to about 30 to 50,000 followers, nothing too crazy, but it would, it would hit the explore page, like million likes a post, 500,000 likes a post, like 10 million likes, right? It, it was just, maybe not 10 million likes, but 10 million views. Yep. It would just go absolutely crazy. And it was a simple post of like, have you seen like the, those Twitter screenshots where they just post it on like their Instagram? Yeah. Yep. They get like no likes, but at the time, like, I think it's still doing it, but it was just like that, that white background with like that blacks text and like your little profile photo for some reason, those worked so well. And it was stuff that I was selling in the female niche that I don't really want to say. Yeah. And it was more like like makeup stuff. And then yeah. just I learned different strategies. Makeup brushes? <laughs> different things that I can sell that it worked for like the, the female mind. Yeah. I, I kind of got into that. I remember seeing those. It would be like a tweet and it's like, this product, da, da, da. And then you swipe into videos of the product. Uh -huh. Yeah. It wasn't necessarily those. Well, some of them, yes. Okay. But... And I, I can show you, I can probably put it like a, on the screen, a video of like for the Galaxy that I still have those on my phone. I lost a lot of stuff from the phones that I've been transferring, which is back and forth. But it's like a white background for just the videos that I'm doing because they were like little, I guess, a little bar here, a little bar on top. It was just white and it was like the video there. It would have text at the top for me at least. And then I would just put like my video on there for promotion. And then it was those and then just like the like Twitter text thing that would just pop off for some reason. And so I wouldn't have to spend a dime on marketing and it would just get me like, I don't even know, just crazy amounts of sales. That's crazy organic, like organic marketing because now it's all shifted to TikTok organic. And that's what all, that's what all the, the dropshipping gurus are preaching. Like, you don't need any money to start dropshipping, just TikTok organic. And it's like yes and no. Like TikTok now is full of scams. Yeah. I can show you a store right now that's running ads on TikTok for a $10 scooter. An electric scooter? An electric scooter for $10. Oh, that doesn't seem real. And it's like an, an Iron Man mask for like 10 bucks as well. Like my, my friend showed me this. He's big into like the, the dropshipping space on TikTok as well. But all of his stuff has crashed recently because there's just so many scams. And yeah. TikTok now... So there's like a big distrust growing in the TikTok advertising. And I know a few people that are in the kid space niche. So like mm -hmm. below 10. Yeah. And they're selling products within like education. I don't really want to get in too much because I don't want to reveal their product. But they're crushing it right now because it's those like it's like Coco Melon and stuff like yeah. that, like within that niche. But it's those people, those parents that are buying stuff that aren't scams. Yeah. But people like my age, like 18 to like, let's say 25, way too many scams going around. Just yeah. random products like the freaking thing that you throw the gyro spin or whatever it's called. And it comes back. I had a few friends that sold those. Yeah. They sell. But like just the, you see the stores that are just selling stuff for like way too cheap. Like let's say I'm selling this mic for like. 20 bucks and I, I run a, a TikTok ad on it. I can get sales. They're going to get a mic that says sure. Not sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like, that's how it is. Like they're undercutting prices of Amazon. Amazon is already the cheapest that you can find. Yeah. And they're undercut undercutting the prices of other dropshipping stores, whether it's private label or not. It's just, they're undercutting everything. Just, it's just a big scam in mm. the end. I think there's going to be changes in the future, but for right now, no, I don't know. I agree because one thing, I think more and more people as the e-commerce space on YouTube grows versus like when maybe your heyday, more and more people now can like see an ad and be like, that's from AliExpress. Yeah. And that's what sucks <laughs> to a degree. So like for me, I focus on just private label branding stuff. So yeah. let's say if I'm going to sell this bottle of liquid dash, but I want to have my own brand, maybe I talk to the manufacturer. I want to sell the exact same product, but just put my own label on yeah. it. White and make can. it stand out. Mm. I mean, that's probably private, private loaded anyways. Like, I guarantee you, Liquid Death, they didn't come up with the idea. It's already been a thing. Like, soda has been in, in cans for so long. You just take yeah, out the sugar. Yeah, but this tastes good as you, shit. You take out everything else, and you have a, a carbonated beverage. 
so they've had just canned beverages already, but like their branding is just really what sells it, to be honest. Yeah. I will say though, this like lime sparkling water tastes leagues better than so many other lime sparkling waters I've had. Yeah, no, it is really good. Cause Cause they got, like, they got like agave. Yeah. yeah. They got some, they got a little secret, secret sauce in here, but they were sponsored because they would send out like cases and almost pallets to just like celebrities without paying them a dime. And like, so like on the full send podcast, they'd get sent out cases like mm. Mike Tyson. You would see all these celebrities like Kanye West, like yeah. Kim Kardashian holding these drinks. They're like, what are those drinks? I want to drink what my celebrities are, are drinking. And then they just continue to grow their brand to like the number one, like a water brand in the world. That's dope. Cause it's like, they just send it out and the product, the product spoke for itself. You see like Joe Rogan, like you see all these huge people that are just free promotion, free promotion, free promotion, mm. just because it's, they're getting, I've seen so stuff. many companies like Joe Rogan will talk for two seconds on his pod about a product and that company will clip that and make that an ad because mm-hmm. Joe Rogan has so much power and influence today that if he um, condones a product or endorses a product, even if he's just casually mentioning it, it's not a sponsored thing, that ad will get so many conversions because be like, oh, well, this is the one that Joe Rogan uses. Exactly. And that's why they're <laughs> crushing the game right now because they, they can do that. And so it's like Fabletics. I think it's Fabletics. Somebody with, uh, or maybe Fashion. Dude, I hate Fabletics, bro. I always get the ads. It's like, what? two pairs of shorts for $24. Yeah. And then you click on it. Yeah, but sign up for a paid membership. Fuck you, Kevin Hart. Yeah, oh yeah, Kevin. Yeah, that's what I was going to talk about is they just have these big celebrities on front of the page. But, dude, they're making so much money. If, if they're not a part of the company when they get paid like a percentage, then they're just getting paid huge, huge. Yeah. It's like million, million plus. It's crazy the, the money that these people will pay. Yeah. There's like, we see like a micro version of that in the fitness industry. Like I'll hear certain people that a company that's maybe not one of the, maybe like not the top five supplement company, but they pick up a huge name, but they're giving them tens of thousands of dollars every month just to have that one person on the athlete team. I can tell you one supplement company, um, Alpha Lion. Yeah. I know I, that I, I know. a lot of their sales don't even come from their athletes. Really? Is yeah. it Amazon? Amazon and their online store. Obviously, okay. there's there's one major. Well, the thing about person. Alpha Lion is I I knew about Alpha Lion when I was like first getting in the gym because my local supplement store had it, mm-hmm. and they just had like good packaging and the product was solid. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but at the time it was fine. But yeah, so the, most of the sales come from just on, online stores or just Amazon. I mean, it's just, it's a small portion from their athletes. I mean, that's interesting. They have Alex Eubank and they're paying him a bag, but yeah, he's still getting a lot of sales. Don't get me wrong, but they're making most of the money from. I've Amazon noticed that there's else. some companies like I'm with Jack Factory currently and their big thing is fat burners, but none of the athletes plug it, but Amazon, they're mm-hmm. like one of the top selling fat burners. And that's been like an issue. Like Amazon is so hard to compete with. Yeah. And it, dude, it's it's hard. Overnight shipping. It's you can like, have like shipping. No, a couple of days ago, I bought something and it came the same day. Yeah, they're dude, they're doing it. Like now. it was like it was like it's, two it's o'clock. It's mind blowing. And it came at five. It's like it's like it's in a warehouse just down the block. Literally, like, this is such a niche so item, and it's them. like two blocks away, and they just ran it over here. I, I don't know how they do it. Like, you pay fifteen bucks Bezos. a month for for Prime membership. You make. They make nothing because I, I work with people that have the Amazon FBA stores. Their their profit margin is like four percent. Nothing. Really? Like so what so is it? Small. Just like crazy scale is how they make some money. I don't know or? how Amazon makes money. I think that if they were smaller than they are now, they'd be gone. Honestly, I know that they have their own brand now is like Amazon Basics. So they they yeah. probably make the most money from that. But I don't think they're making any money otherwise because they have their trucks. They have to hire people in the warehouse to pack everything, all the boxes. They have to hire. Does Amazon marketing. not take, like, let's say I buy a product. Do they not take a little percentage of that product that's sold? No, they do. Okay. But it's just, then again, it's just like, not a lot. so small margin. Okay. Like, super small. Like, I buy a $20 item, Amazon might get a dollar of that. Possibly. And, because if, and if the rest you think goes about to it, the like, FBA guy or whatever the fuck. Well, if you think about it, let's say I'm selling as, like, an, an, as an, an Amazon store seller, and I'm selling this mic, I might make only 4% off of that. Only 4% margin. Mm. It's that small. So I've I've sold a lot of these to even make money. But so if someone did want to get into like Amazon right now, big ticket items would kind of be what you want to go for. If they'll sell. Yeah, if they'll sell. So like cameras and mics. But then again, if you get into Amazon, like you got to buy 100 cameras. Yeah. You got to buy 1,000 mics. Yeah, it's a lot of uh, upfront. And there is some secrets to the reviews system. 
on how you can kind of milk the reviews to get more. You can pay for a lot of things on Amazon. People don't really talk about. Yeah. And I'd figure, bro. I mean, that's, that's how it is on everything. Like, it's like when you go on YouTube's trending page, it's like, this is not trending videos. All of these are the companies paid money to have this on the trending page. Like late night show host, ad, late night show host, music video, music video, late night show host. Okay, one like random ass video, late night show host. That's definitely corrupt. But I know like, let's say you buy this from me and I'm the source of it. I'm like, hey, if you leave a five star review. Send you another pack? No, I'll refund you the money. Oh, oh. Big brain. Because that five star review, it's like, gonna boost it's ultimately you. worth more than a pack of fucking water. Exactly. Because that five star review can get you two sales or three sales. Interesting. But they just keep doing that over and over and over again. And they obviously can't say, like, hey, if you give us a five star review, we're going to give you your money back or a free product. They, they can't legally say that. Otherwise, they'll just get taken down. But they have their way with the wording. And that's something that I've seen on the Amazon community. Interesting. But nobody talks well, about Well, Amazon that. Exposed. I wasn't expecting Amazon Exposed so segment. So I've seen some, I don't want to get in trouble for this, but I've seen some supplement companies, not anything that I've worked with or affiliated myself with, but what they do is it's a fat burner. It's like the number one selling fat burner on mm -hmm. Amazon. They will give you a refund or half off for a review. And so they have like 80,000 reviews, five star reviews. And that's like when I'm sh when I go on Amazon, I base I just look at the review count. It's like okay, four and a half stars, ten thousand reviews. This is like I'm gonna get a decent product. Yeah, it's it's crazy how how they do this kind of stuff. And yeah, it's just it's bad in my opinion. I I think it's just bad you, business. You don't currently do like any Amazon FBA type stuff. No, I try not to. But you still mm -hmm. have some drop shipping going on on the side. So with Shopify, like what you can do is you can actually link your Shopify store to Amazon. As long as you have a fulfillment center that's like an actual center, or you I didn't know that. I thought office. if you wanted to sell on Amazon, you have to give the stuff to the warehouse. No, um, if you do FBA, so if Amazon fulfills it, yes. But if you're like aff affiliated with Amazon and you can just guarantee that you can ship it from your warehouse, you can do that. But you don't have to do it from Amazon headquarters itself. Amazon, like the warehouse is over there, you can have it in your own warehouse. Interesting. Okay, a little. Let's just take a little steer away from Amazon. So let's go back to the story. So now we'll just say this is around one to two years ago. You're making. Let's. What 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 was your net worth looking like in 2020? If you had to guess, give a little a little range. What are we adding? Just complete net worth. Because I, um, I, I had crypto at the time. I was getting into crypto. I got into crypto in 2019. And That's then, awesome. yeah, it was very, no, but no, I never really got into Bitcoin. I bought Bitcoin way too late in my opinion. And so I had Ethereum and that was part of my net worth. I had just some other like ETFs and just various. Things so, I okay. I guess right before you started like investing in crypto and it was all just like cash in the bank account. What do you think that looked like? I can not, not like business stuff that you're like having to cover costs of business, but like you're like, you're your money that you've earned. I don't want to give an exact number, but it yeah, was like multiple range. seven figures. Multiple seven figures? Okay. And at, at that time... At I, like 16, 17. I couldn't buy anything. I mean, I was buying whatever I wanted. I would, I'd go to like 648 like every single day. Like, well, not every single day. I would actually go every Sunday. Yeah. And I did that earlier this year, which I wish I didn't because I just waste some money. It'd be like 400 bucks every Sunday. Yeah, but what's this? a fucking drop in the ocean for you, so... And so... But no, I was smart with the money. I mean, I bought a few designer items. I mean, I've just had them for a while. So even early on, you were like, you were getting some money and it's like, I'm not going to go ham. I'm going to like stack it, keep grinding, keep working. Because I, I feel like, like a lot of people would fucking start going. Because I've even heard stories of like e-commerce people like, yeah, I got the car I didn't really need and ended up like fucking me over in the future. Or I did this. I got this house I shouldn't have. Traveled too much. I could say, how would I buy a car? That's true. I don't it's, it's actually a benefit that yeah, you did I mean, it at a younger age. I have the Supra. That's mine. I have the Audi. That was mine. Mm -hmm. But I was like, it was my mom's name. Okay. Because I can't register my name as a 16 right. 17 So old. you had, if I'm not mistaken, a Camaro, then an Audi, then a Supra, and now the M5 Cobb. So I, yeah. So before the Camaro, I had a like 2016 maybe Mazda M3. Or, I mean, Mazda 3. Maybe it was Mazda 6. I don't know. It was, a, it was like a red sedan. And I have a photo of that car too. And so we, that, that car was actually given to my dad okay. from like one of his friends. And so they, he so it was gave like the family car that you got to use. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so and then, we sold that car and we got $14,000 for that car. And that money went towards me getting a Camaro. Okay. And so the Camaro was $29,000 and... Or Were you making the, money by the time you got the Camaro? Yeah, so it was like... I was making a lot. You're like... You're making Because I was like 2019. Yeah. Oh. And so I was... That was already two or three years ago. into... No, it wasn't at all. <laughs> Dude, 2019, I was in community college, about to drop out, getting 100 views on memories on, on Snapchat videos. where it shows like the Camaro that I had. It's like the Camaro, then it's the Audi, and then it's the Supra, and then it's my car now. And... But yeah, so that money went towards the Camaro, and then... I'm very picky with my cars. I'm mm-hmm. not going to just buy a car that like, man, I love this car. I'm going to buy it and then I'm going to sell it for a loss. I buy cars that appreciate. I buy cars that hold their value. And so with the Camaro, I was able to buy it and we had a lot of money to like equity to put into the car. It wasn't paid off. And so it was like a $15,000 loan on it, which was pretty much almost nothing. And so not that it's like nothing, but I mean, I don't know. It just, it was so small. Yeah. Well, you're, so you're making fat stacks like 15 16 17 you're still in high school what does that do to your ego because you're already like the popular kid but all of a sudden you're the popular kid that's like a self-made seven-figure motherfucker did did that affect your mental at all no because i mean you were an asshole before (laughs) (laughs) no i don't know i just i was still a kid yeah and whether the money in my bank account like I just, I just didn't like have that determine who I was. Yeah. And I was once again, just still a kid. I couldn't go out and buy a house. I could, I mean, I could, but it's just weird things to get into because then I have to transfer like the, the name into my yeah. name. I couldn't like buy a car in my name whenever I said my name. I couldn't do a lot of things without my parents. Like let's say I want to go to the mall. Hey mom, can I go to the mall just so I can go spend $10,000 at Louis Vuitton? <laughs> I couldn't do that. Cause I was like, yeah. absolutely not. She wouldn't let me do that. And so that's a, that's a good mom. I just, I knew that I had something coming up and I was very smart with the money. I always watched like David Ramsey growing up as well. And he was like, if you get into, if you get into any debt, like you always want to pay off the highest like credit card first or pay that one down. I mean, he goes into like a lot of philosophy. Was David Ramsey your main, like when you started like wanting to make money, was he your main like influencer? You started watching managing money, not necessarily managing money? making money, but managing money. Yes. Okay. What are some names that really spoke to you and had a lot of, influence on you in terms of like information motivation whatever when so you started getting into this early graham stefan okay like 2019 graham stefan mm-hmm. or 20 almost before that and he actually told me about dave ramsey and so and his his cat's also named dave, dave ramsey so it's kind of he named his cat dave, dave ramsey, ramsey or That's ramsey funny. at least and so i learned a lot from him i learned a lot of credit card advice too and that's a whole nother world to get into yeah that's a that's a topic we can loop around <laughs> because you've like said some things that some of it I retained and some of it I've had to hear again, but you understand like business credit and all these things and like these loopholes that people can go through. Yeah. Like infinite money glitch. Yeah. And I noticed that school, like really, they, I love school to teach you the baseline because you need to just at least have like a mind to just go out and make a decision Yeah, to just like, I don't know, just have logic. So you had a decent like school experience. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, I wasn't like, I, 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 I think the high school year, my first like freshman year, I just started screwing around. I didn't care because okay. I was like, I know that I'm making all this money. I was like, I, I told my mom, I was like, mom, like, I, just, I, just, I don't care. Like, I don't care to make good grades. I have the baseline that I have from K through basically eighth grade. Yeah. Obviously, I need to learn a little, a little bit more. Um, I don't care about history, to be honest. But yeah, I, I feel like I just I needed to learn more math, I guess, more English. And, I and guess, by then you also realize like, oh, I can learn everything I need to learn online and yeah. these these teachers that make forty thousand dollars a year aren't exactly going to teach me how to make a million dollars well, a year it wasn't that i just i feel like i had no time to just wake up at seven seven a.m ish shower get ready for school and then leave and i couldn't wake up because i am diagnosed with like insomnia so yeah. i literally just i can't wake up anyways or no hypersomnia i mean actually i have i have both hypersomnia and insomnia so it's hard for me to wake up hard for me to go to sleep and so I was having trouble wake, waking up in the morning and I would always miss the first period. It was like either English or math, so it sucked. But I'm glad that I did like finish school because I wanted to drop out. And I know a few, few people like do that, the same thing that I do. They did drop out like at my school too. I mean, he's, he's, they're, they're making a lot of money. And there's a certain person like in particular that I always thought I was like faking my stuff throughout high school. Yeah. But I mean, we can see. I, I don't think Look I am. Look at me now. Where are I you mean, at, yeah, bro? Exactly. Broke like, boy. I have my own stuff. Everything's Brokey. My name. No, he's not broke. He's rich. Oh. Yeah. Richie. 
Yeah, I'm sure he'll, somebody will, will probably send this over to him. But we were like battling back and forth. I remember I brought up like e-commerce, and he was like, he, he was like a year older than me. I brought it up to somebody else that he was friends with, and they showed it to him like, oh, he's probably faking it. And then I showed him like one of our stores and one of my like um, sales, and like, oh no, nah, this all was fake a kid stuff. from school. Yeah, and was he like rich, family rich, or like self-made? E-commerce. So wait, what are the odds that two kids blow up on e-commerce and go to the same school? I wish that we worked together. Yes. Yeah. I got into it before him. I just didn't really like go public about it because I just like, what do I even say? Because nobody was doing it. Yeah. I'm like, hey, like to this here's, day, here's to this day, you're you're still pretty low key with your things. Yeah, and I like which that. I'm trying to get you. I need you to like post more YouTube videos because I don't have time. Hire someone. <laughs> I need to. Yeah, but no. So there was always a thing like, oh, he's just faking it. Like anything that he has is like daddy's money. Which is a lie, like... That's the go-to for people. And I get it to an extent, like, I do... Like, when I do see people, I don't... I forget his name, but I bet you know who he is. He's, like, has a decent YouTube following. He does TikTok now, but he's, like, actually the son of a billionaire. But he, like, vlogs and oh, documents yeah, yeah, yeah. his life. I think it was over in Dallas. Oh, no, is, is it that or is it... Um, I don't remember the name. Um, crap, I actually talked to him before. Is, is it the guy with a lot of cars? Like, the crazy, like, Bugatti cars? Or is it the guy that... Has like huge crazy like parties like somewhere else like on yachts. I, th- and stuff I like think that. I've seen both kids. Okay, but like that's one thing that now as I'm starting to learn more is like I'm grateful that while I'm not there in terms of success whatsoever, I'm glad that like I'm having to earn every little thing by myself. And it's one of the things like when I think about having kids, it's different if I have a daughter. But if I have a son, it's like, yo, I might get throw you little bones here and there, but you're gonna learn how to earn everything yourself. Versus I see these kids that are like pushing Ferraris as soon as they turn 16, daddy's money. Of course, they have hot girlfriends, but we know why they have hot girlfriends and this and that. And it's just, I feel like it's not the same when you didn't earn it. And I do think that it's true when you hear about those kids like not truly being happy because they didn't earn anything. They have nothing to look back on. This was just the baseline for them since birth. But the thing is, they can't help that. No, they definitely so can't. There's it's nothing definitely that, the parent's decision to like, like whether spoil them or not. Right. And... I know that they have their own stories. They have stuff that like happened throughout their like their life. I think one of the guys is Bob Misery, or I, I can't remember his last name. It's, I think it's something along those lines. But I know he has his own story, and it's not on Sunshine, Sunshine Rainbows. Maybe you have a lot of money, maybe you don't. Either way, like they have their own stuff going on. Yeah, it's almost like when the money, because for most people, money is the biggest problem. It's the biggest stress. But when you take that out, everything else is kind of amplified mm-hmm. because it's like, oh, well, now the relationship issue is like not because of money. It's an even bigger deal yeah. or this is an even bigger deal. It's so I would say that would be the one benefit is that you come out the gate with like an abundance mindset because all you've ever known is abundance versus people that are born into poor families. A lot of them end up staying poor because they have a poor scarcity mindset their entire lives. They label themselves as poor. They're like, I'll never make that money. Anyone that's rich is daddy's money. I'm not going to strive for it. I'm going to go to high school and then get a job at Walmart type shit. Yeah. For me, like I've always been very independent early on. Yeah. Like I wanted to work my own job. I was a lifeguard 2019. I think it was 2019. And like I, I had my mom to take me to, to work every day. And I was like, I, I just can't have her do that. That's not her job to do that. Her, her job is to do like something else. And cause I'd, I'd have to wake up like 7am and leave by like 730 to open up a pool. When did, you were doing drop shipping for a while, but then now your marketing guy, was that the next thing from drop shipping? You got into marketing or was there anything else that kind of like was that next stepping stone yeah, into so your current rich ass <laughs> business no life? So I, I, had, I knew a lot from drop shipping. I made like dozens of stores, made a lot of money, but I, I always like wanted to help people out. And so I got into my, my marketing agency, obviously. And it's, it's like not even like a proper marketing agency. I don't have my own website right now. I have, I mean, it's down. It's, it's like a ClickFunnels website. I literally just built it recently, but it's down. I don't pay for it. Hmm. <laughs> I'd rather just use a hundred bucks or 300 bucks. So you're just, you're else. essentially, you're helping other businesses and like they come to you, they give you X amount of budget for advertising and you run the advertising. Pretty much the businesses that I work with now is like, I don't have a budget. They're just like, they trust me so much. Cause there's like, it's, it's word of mouth at that point. No. Cause like I show them results. Like, Hey guys, like, I just spent five bucks and this client made 500 bucks. Like it, it's stuff like that, that I can show them. And I literally have proof of everything. And so 
it's word of mouth. And then on Facebook as well, I have somebody that helps me with outreach on Facebook and we help, or we, we are able to book clients to that. And I mean, he just started like recently this year, but like it's really just Facebook that I've gotten clients from. And with, if it's not like local clients then it's just Facebook, Facebook's something that people need to get into, especially if they want yeah. to start an agency. I need to get into Facebook, bro. I saw, I saw, I sent it to you, a TikTok. It was Mick Jugger Nuggets, and he's like, oh, this is my YouTube video. On YouTube, it made $1,500. That, that same video on Facebook made me forty grand. And I was like, okay, maybe I should post my YouTube videos on the fucking Facebook. Like, what yeah. am I, what's going on I here? I can monetize or have, like, in-stream ads on my, on my Facebook videos, but they wouldn't really go to many people. Okay. But, I mean, I could repost, like, Andrew Tate comp- I can't, or, uh, content. I could post, like, literally anything of, of a celebrity and put ads in the videos because Instagram would pay me. Instagram pays me, like, 75 bucks to post. And by, by ads, it's, like, the same like, kind of mid-roll ads that are, like, yeah. YouTube? Okay. Yeah, but they pay a lot more. Way, yeah. way more. Because it's cheaper to be on YouTube than it is on Facebook. Yeah, dude. My, my CPM is trash on YouTube. It's, like, it's there, but it's not much. Yeah. I know that Facebook has just been so expensive recently. So any ads that are on Facebook, they're paying money, a lot of money. Yeah, I've I've noticed that because I think I've seen a lot of, because I briefly um, was looking at it, like you were helping me, like experimenting with dropshipping and stuff. And I started watching content. I see a lot of people like that are transitioning out of Facebook and into like Snapchat, TikTok, even even stuff like Pinterest, like random, like more niche sites. Yeah. Um, What's funny is I think I've told you this story. I'm like the failed version of you in terms of like starting dropshipping young. So wh- my story is I randomly figured out about dropshipping on like some some guy's YouTube, not even a big, like maybe 10,000 sub YouTube channel. And I was watching it and I was like, okay, all right, interesting. So I made a Shopify with the free account mm-hmm. and I set up, I was like the basic, like AliExpress watches, AliExpress backpacks. <laughs> and then this is when like, I think Endgame Avengers came out and like that, AliExpress had the the white Marvel Avengers suit that they all wore mm-hmm. as like a hoodie or a shirt. So I put those on the site and I did like the um, Instagram marketing. So I literally, I remember, I remember DMing in a Marvel fan page account. It had to be like some kid, bro. Yeah. But they had like 40, 50K and I was like, hey, like, would you like to like be paid to like run a post? You just post it on your feed. And I could tell his kid because like I just wasn't even, I think I paid him seven dollars <laughs> and i typed him the fucking paragraph uh-huh. to put and like he i said just put the link in your bio and he did it he posted it, it ran and i remember for days i was like dang I, I didn't get any sales i didn't realize that because i was still using free shopify it was locked oh man so what i was like uh, I, I like and then i just gave up and like focus on youtube and stuff and i remember looking back and people, because on the locked shop fights, like email to get updates, mm-hmm. there was emails. And I was like, those wow. could have been sales. And I'm just thinking if I, because I had zero dollars. So I was like, if for some reason I had money and I paid and unlocked it, what would have happened? Like maybe I would be like a mini version of you, but that's okay because I focused on YouTube and that's still the goal to this day. I'll be yeah. rich one day, bro. We'll I both have cool cars one day. YouTube bro. grind. I made a new account. It's Millennial Million. Millennial Million. Oh my gosh. Millennial Spadama. Millionaire. It's gonna be for podcast only. Okay. And so, I just want to have podcasts because I have a, I have so many people that I could podcast. We'll just literally just turn off these cameras and then turn back on and do your episode. No, like, bro, <laughs> my network is cr- like, it's probably like I don't. Oh, it's out of my league. I got you. The network that I manage, and the one people that I have connections to, like the people that they manage, mm-hmm. dude, it's insane. Like it's it's wild. It's crazy. Yeah. And so people that are helping me get my Instagram back right now, like they manage like all the social media giveaways. So any like high T clout, um, I know that's a big that's, hustle that's right from, now. That's is from, the, from the Luke giveaway Lentz, stuff. Trey Colley with all of his Instagram giveaway stuff. Like I'm like within that kind of people. Like, I mean, that's just like the econ people and whether it's social media marketing, whether it's just like econ drop shipping or something along those lines with social media, like black hat or gray hat stuff. I'm like within that. And, the funny thing is, like, my social media isn't that big, but I'm still, like, one of the top guys that yeah. people have access to, so. No, you've always been a ghost. You're a sleeper. I love it, though. I think I think it's more of, like, a flex to be, like, that one, like, low-key guy than being the top, like, guy with, like, a million plus followers in my eyes, because I'm comfortable with what I have. I made some good money. It's a dangerous word. That. Comfortable. I'm saying, like, with, with my following. Like, okay, I, I don't, with I don't social have, numbers. Like, like, bro, I have, I've had 10K for four years. Yeah. I'm not even kidding. Yeah. I, I don't care to have a million. It'd be cool to have a million, but like, 
I don't care to. So like, you don't I'm want that. You don't that. want that Andrew Tate status. No, I mean, whenever I get my account back, it's gonna be verified instantly. So, and I need to get all my accounts verified, and work on the Facebook group to do that. Mm. But I don't want to grow it at all because I want to have people that are on it, just high quality people. Because if I have a million, but if you're people, posting podcasts and they succeed, you're bound to get build yeah, a following. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that's right. But growing it the way managers are growing accounts now is not the way that I want to grow my account. And so I would have to post consistently trying to get back into the algorithm. It'd be really hard for me. That's one thing I hate nowadays is like, it's a, it's a lot like that on Instagram because like the algorithm changes like frequently. I, it's, it's somewhat on TikTok and on YouTube. I'm experiencing quite a bit is that as a creator, because like I, when I started this, it was just, I want to make videos. Now I have very entrepreneur type goals because, and that's, but that's developed very recently, like 2022. Like I now have plans for like stuff. Like I want to make more money, whatever that goes beyond the YouTube channel. Um, but I always wanted to like create content I, and like I've changed it a lot, but the creating content remained the same. But now it feels like with a lot of creators is that instead of making the exact content they want to, everyone's having to play the algorithm game. And it's just unfortunate to see because all these big companies, they like to pretend like there's these, there are these private companies. We can ban whoever we want. There's no other options. Like these mm -hmm. giant things like Twitter is the town square. If you ban someone off Twitter, you're banishing their voice. Yeah. Like no one's going to get on Gab or whatever, whatever the other Twitter alternatives are. Most people aren't like conservatives that get banned are going to go there, but that's mm -hmm. it. So that is one thing when you, like you mentioned, like the algorithm stuff is it, it's playing that game is very annoying. But that's why I don't like that, Instagram. If you get into the algorithm too much and let's say you grow your account to hundred K followers. Yeah. You have, yeah. 50,000 likes per post, 300,000 likes per post, 500,000 likes per post. Once that happens, and I've seen it so many times from my friends. So have I. You hit it. These alpha land. And then <laughs> gone. Yep. Your, your, your engagement goes from maybe like 40% to like 1%, 1 or 2%. Yeah. And I've seen it and way they, too. They, it's they, like, they, I don't want to get to 100K an algorithm. and it's dead in the water. And they'll just lose. They'll even lose followers and they're like never going to grow like, again. That's why like, I don't, I don't want to grow. It's, like, it's like cheap. To. It's like cheap engagement, cheap clout. Versus building something that lasts and truly provides value. Because like butt cheek picture, pictures, as much as guys like to jerk off, it doesn't provide much value. Versus like some of the voices that have been around for so long, they create elite content. So yes, their value is entertainment, but also people that provide information and stuff. Just they have, they've been doing it for years and years and they continue. And people that started posting like fitness stuff, I can actually name one person. He's probably going to watch this. His name is David, David Alam. He kind of started like the whole fitness thing around the, like whenever I started. I think he came in a little bit later, but he was growing with me as well. And so I hit 10K four years ago, four years ago, literally hit 10K. And then after that, my account kind of just stopped. It, it just fell off. But I know for him, like he never made a new account. I made a new account. Mm -hmm. He's still trying to like, get his account back. And I haven't told him, I was like, bro, you got to make a new account. Yeah. I think it's like 6,000 or maybe 4,000 followers. But we he, have he a friend grow. who I've said, I tried telling them they need to make a new YouTube and they didn't. And I'm seeing now that they're getting like, their engagement's not good. That's what sucks. Is like, for me, my last video got, it got some views, mm -hmm. like 2,600 and like 400, 500. Yeah. Honestly, I have 900 now. Yeah. And then. I think, you're, I think your YouTube is still like, small enough to where like, you're good and like you'll see explosive growth like i don't think you have to make a new one for those e-commerce videos i think it's good though because i watch so much youtube yeah. like i don't really care I, i'll go on instagram see if anybody in me if they didn't i close the app i go on snapchat if anybody like important snapchat me i'll answer them but then i just get off the app and so like i spend so much time on youtube i'm yep. always learning and I, I just have so much information like that i want to use that's why like bro i upload a video it's at, it's seo like 50 out of 50 or, like 100 out of 100 and I make That's sure always a good feeling, bro. When the vid IQ 100%. tells you it's 50 out of 50 SEO, it's like, I'm getting in that search. My recent video did that. Yeah. Like it's, it's doing two out of 10 right now. Um, but the recommendation is average, but my views from search is up because I got, I hit that no fap mm -hmm. search rank. Cause I, I SEO that shit perfectly. No fap is in the title twice description tags. Like I feel oh. like posting to your like audience doesn't even matter anymore. It's just what no. YouTube recommends. Subscriber like, count with, like is almost like, nullified nowadays like think about like instagram like if you post to instagram feed and your reels it's going to get like shadow banned almost for like 24 yeah. hours until it goes to the reels page but then if it doesn't pick up then it's not going to pick up at all yeah i'm actually having clients right now that are managing students they're posting on instagram just reels alone 
they get like 30,000 like views per post. Yeah. But if they post to their feed and their reels, but they have no followers, like mm. 5,200 followers, so they can't get that boost from their feed. So it just shadow bans basically the post. Yeah. And so they just post the reels and it just goes crazy. It's a similar story with my YouTube. If, because I made my biggest, got my biggest following from fitness, uh, originally my appearance on the Modcast, and then people seeing the people, the fitness guys that I associate with, but my big thing, dear skinny guys, they got me well over 10 to 15,000 subs was fitness, fitness content. And I'm trying to transition into self-improvement. And I don't mean to stroke my own dick here, but I make good content and I know I do for the most part. Occasionally I'll toss out a vlog I don't love, but like when I make like content that's like informational value, it's like I know it has the value and I know it has the quality. But because let's say my average when I was making fitness vlogs, because I had my little fitness cult was 15% CTR the first couple of days, like click-through rate. So I switched to self-improvement. I'm getting more likes. I'm getting more positive comments. I'm getting even better view duration percentages in a lot of cases. But because that average CTR is like, oh, only 10% of people from subscription are clicking on it versus 15, YouTube decides, we're not going to recommend this, bro, to anyone. So it's, it's nowadays, like you were saying, like the followers and subs don't matter that much because every video, I could have 5K or I could have the 42K I have now. It doesn't matter because all of my views are based off YouTube recommended YouTube homepage. And then occasionally if it's SEO based, a search, search ranking. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if like, I mean, Mr. Beast always says like your content transitions over time with the audience because they're going to grow older. They're going to like different things. And if you look at his stuff from four years ago, five years ago, then that he's posting now significantly changed. And if you look at mm -hmm. the views, it's only gone up like this, yep. but you went from fitness, fitness, fitness to self-improvement. Yep. And I wonder if that was like almost too big of a jump. So if you had like fitness and then fitness with like a little bit of self-improvement, just like kind of like bridging yeah. like the gap. And then you I almost, I almost tried to like make up for that be, and it, it worked, but the going to the gym is not enough video. Yeah. One but out of, one out of 10 got a hundred K yeah. because gym's in the title and they click it. And like, there's like two seconds of me working out and the rest of the video is me telling you, yeah, guys, j going to the gym just isn't enough. You need to do these other self-improvement practices or your life isn't going to be what you want it to be. If the algorithm knows that you're posting gym content, people that want to watch it, they're going to get brand new people in and they mm -hmm. like that. And so you can use those brand new people because they don't know what you posted in the past. Yeah. They don't know all the fitness videos. They just know that you're posting this and say how oh, the gym isn't enough. Yeah. So how can you turn those brand new people and maybe say at the end of the video, something for like an upcoming video that's like self-improvement. So maybe you could just use that to like say, hey, we're doing this in the future, just self-improvement, yeah. not just gym videos. Yeah, this, I mean... Fitness is always going to be a part of self-improvement, so the fitness isn't going to die on my channel. It's just I want to provide more value besides deadlift PR motivation, like versus me telling you how to like control your mental health. One of those videos has gives so much more value, and I think, like you said, that we transition. I'm making videos for a younger version of myself mm -hmm. um, now. That's my current goal, and that's what I did with Dear Skinny Guys. And yeah, it was fitness-based, but it popped off, and it worked so well. One, because of the storytelling, but also... There's so many people that are like, oh, this is exactly what I needed. It's literally like my avatar is just me five, six years ago. But it, it's so broad if you think about it. That is like, pretty broad. It's, it's very broad. And let's like say skinny like, guys wanting like to improve. deadlift PR, like you were saying, yeah. that's pretty niche because yeah. maybe not every new guy in the gym is hitting a deadlift PR. So dear skinny guys is a very broad term and also skinny guys in the title. Yeah. Instant like algo boost. Yeah. I, hypothetically, I might make a sequel to dear skinny guys maybe by the end of this year because there's a my next business venture, one of the projects is going to be fitness based. So I kind of need to get some fitness videos out to plug that. And I, I might, I might make a little bag, bro. We'll see. Yeah. You gotta help me build a site. I want to, I want, I want Kenny Bender.com to look fucking amazing. I'll add you to my schedule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I can, no shot. I'm going to fit that schedule, bro. Literally. That's yeah. why we're filming this at like 11 PM right now. Yeah. It's wild. Like random. You hit me up. At seven, and we we hey, what if we threw it? this together, and it, it looks pretty good. Yeah. Comment, comment what you think of the long form content. Comment something if you made it this far. Comment, comment whatever you want. Actually, I don't give a fuck. You know, I would definitely like continue doing this. I think that whether it's for like your channel or my channel, because I like being able to tell my story and you know, kind of like just you questioning me and like how like I kind of came to where I am. But like beyond my story, there's millions of other things that yeah I can just tell. And that's how I, that's how I feel too. That's why I'm glad like I'm doing the cancer thing because I can talk about more things and I get to actually sell myself. Cause like if I give my thoughts on X event or 
I react to an X thing and people are watching it. Yeah, they like kind of want to hear about the topic itself, but they're like, what does he think about it? Versus the Kenny's Fit, even right now, it's more niched into like the value I'm providing. And I want both. Like I want to have my brand that my me mm -hmm. that like just through being authentic and like giving my authentic opinions, I want to attract people like me to attach to me while also providing the value. And like, I'm sure you want to do the same thing. But for me, like, I always want to be like a director or producer growing up. Mr. My producer. uncle is, he owns an acting school. And he's also a director for like high budget films in Hollywood. And so I have direct access to oh, him. Oh, you're an industry plant. No, no, no. But I have access to him. He's like, like a, a far uncle. I don't know how I'm related to him. It's just my dad said he's my uncle. So he's my uncle. And so I've always wanted to be some director, but I've always wanted to tell a story. Yeah. But I, I, I want to make really high quality content, but I can't tell a story in 10 minutes. If I'm Mr. Beast, I probably, I can probably make that happen, but I need more time, like to just talk about like everything. Maybe. I, I can't just, I can't miss one thing. Cause if I miss one thing, I'm gonna miss something else and something else. I just, I can't miss those key points. So yeah, being able to tell a story, key having a platform to tell important. my story is like really important to me, but I, I want to make a long form of quality content. I just make sure it's funny when I actually watch it. Yeah. And there's long form content is perfect in today's market, which is why I need to get more into it and why I'm like looking into streaming because you record an hour to five hours of content and like some people will watch that. Yes. But also you can turn that into five YouTube clip videos, a hundred fucking shorts. Mm -hmm. It's like, and that'll get your name out, attract people to that. Some people will just stick around for clips. Some people will just stick around for TikToks. But the fact that you can turn one piece into a hundred pieces of content, because in a lot of ways, still throwing stuff out there, even if you make great content, it's still kind of like a slot machine. Like it's still kind of a gamble when I upload a video, it's still kind of a gamble when I upload a TikTok, mm -hmm. if it'll just hit, hit that G spot in the algorithm. Um, so yeah, no, I'm all for long form content. Hopefully they rock with this because this is a lot easier than I thought it would be. <laughs> I will say, I know that Mr. Beast is a taste supporter. Because he talked about him on a couple of podcasts. Based. And based Jimmy. <laughs> nah, no, Susan's gonna so, Susan's gonna hear that. <laughs> He's like, ah, views, 10 million views next video. Yeah. <laughs> Only 10 million. <laughs> Only 10 but million. But no, so that's a, crazy that a 10 mil video for him is like a 10 out of 10. He was saying how like he wanted to use a Tate, like the thing that he I don't know, like go on every single podcast, get as many clips as possible and grow from there. And he did that. He did like seven podcasts in like three days. I'm pretty sure. I think I noticed him. Yeah, starting to. But pop he up did on so many podcasts because he listened to like what Tate was saying. Like you do these podcasts, you get clips made, and then people just post you indefinitely. Yeah, Tate's much. blow up was a masterclass on like affiliate marketing and building a cult following. Even even if I haven't, which I have on streams, I've talked about him. But you can just implied by like the life I live and how like deep I am into self improvement and like wanting to be successful that like I like Andrew Tate. But one thing is. It was a couple months ago, earlier this year, I took a trip for my good friend Brandon's birthday. We took a Chicago trip and it was a great trip. It was awesome. But when I came back, I was hit with like this downcast of, and I'm not going to say I had depression. I just felt depressed, but also just very confused about everything in my life. And something I've not experienced for a while, because like p people on my channel know like, and we, we both have been like diagnosed with depression and had like taken SSRIs and stuff, which is cringe and not epic and not based. But one thing when I was in that period of like earlier this year, I knew about Tate beforehand, but then I really started getting into his podcasts and didn't make me misogynist, didn't make me beat up women. It made me want to become super successful and achieve like tr true freedom, not just financial freedom, like kind of, but like true freedom from escaping the matrix, whatever. It taught me better, di like my relationship with women now is so much better than before. And the main thing is it, it pulled me out of whatever state I was. Yeah. So shout out, shout out Tate. The depression isn't real thing is very controversial, but I, I'm not, I'm not f against that notion. One thing that I will say, like kind of getting off topic because I know we shouldn't really touch on Tate too much, but I will say like, after Riley died, like my whole world, I don't know, my, my eyes opened up. My, my third eye truth was like, bro, whatever you're doing, you're not doing, you're not working hard enough. And so a whole gear just flipped in me. That's why I work so much now. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, before, like I wasn't, I mean, I was still working a lot managing my clients, but now I'm like, definitely had more free time. Yeah. I saw but, you more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But now I'm working 10 times, literally 10 times harder. I'm making 10 times more. Really? But I'm also teaching like, so many other people right now. And yeah. so like I have mentor mentees, I'm, I'm a mentor to them. So I'm able to teach them 
basically everything that I know for like 12 months straight. Are you taking more clients? Yeah, absolutely. Where would, where would people watching, if they were interested, would contact you? Honestly, they can just DM my Instagram, like the Caleb Canales, the one that's not suspended right now. C-A-N-A-L-E-S. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, I mean, you can talk to me on there. I, I give my, gave out my number. I don't really care. I mean, if I feel like I trust the person, then yeah. But if I yeah. don't trust, like, nah, you can't get my number because mm. that's, that's valuable. I, don't, I get spam calls sometimes it's just like randomly on WhatsApp or like Telegram. So it's kind of annoying. But so currently your main your main things is you're mentoring people mm-hmm. and you're running your the marketing agency and I'm sure that's making the most spread right now and I you also cuz when you pulled up with your M5 comp you were like oh I just picked this up you're renting out your car that's something so, else so I have money to pay for my car note it's $1374 I just paid 800 bucks towards it today cuz it's uh, it's due on the 31st and I was like okay I bought this car I can pay for it, but I don't want to pay for it. I don't want to have to just like, oh man, here's another 1400 bucks. I had to pay for it. Go, just go into the car. And so I have equity in the car. I put $15,000 down towards it. Not that you'd have to, but that's literally like the most I, w- I had to put down. Like I could only finance $71,000 and it was an $85,000 car with taxes and everything. So I was like, okay, my friends are, are, are doing Turo. They have C8s. So they're making $4,000, $5,000 a month per C8. Wow. And I was like, how can I do this? And I talked to some other people on Facebook and like this one dude is getting, re- he's renting out like 30 cars a day and they're anywhere from like a cheap, like $5,000 car to like an old M6, like a 2016 M6. And he's making some crazy numbers. Like his end of year, like numbers that he's supposed to say is like 300 some, like 360 some thousand. Wow. From the, and his, all of his cars are paid off. So that's profit. Uh, yeah, yeah. Whenever everything's paid off, unless he gets new cars, yeah. he has their car notes, but it's like 200 bucks for like a Camry. Everything's yeah. paid off for him and he's been doing it for like, for like two or three years now. And so, so he this says is that like, it took eight months for his stuff to get paid off. You would say this is a good hustle for people to be looking into currently. One thing people need to understand is that you don't need to have money to, to get started. So my girlfriend, she has very small income and she's going to go out to BMW Brokey. dealership that <laughs> well, she still has money. She is like, she's, Women. Has, she's, she's not broke. But she's gonna go to a dealership that my f- um, friend he's a, he's a finance manager of it, like lifelong, like long term friend, and so we're gonna get a really good deal for her. But she's gonna put no money down on a fourteen thousand dollar car, like eight, eight to fourteen thousand dollar car. She's gonna rent it out for anywhere from sixty bucks to eighty bucks a day, and it would cost like fifteen dollars a day just to pay for the car if you were to do it to break it down per day. The car notes like two hundred bucks to three hundred bucks monthly, but the car can make like up to a hundred dollars a day. And that's with add-ons, that's with like prepaid mileage, that's part of the add-ons, like fuel. I mean, there's so many things that you can just make money on. And so within like two days, the car is paid off basically. And people pay for like long-term trips. So let's say they, they get a Camry, not just for one day, because who's going to get a Camry for one day? They're going to come from, from like California to Houston. They're going to pay for a Camry for like a week. And so then the car is basically rented out for a week. So four so people can rent it out for a week and then you, the car is like, Oh, you're constant. saying they're visiting Houston and they're going to get a car for a week. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I, for a second, I was like, they're driving it from California? No, or they just need a car. Yeah. Like, let's say they just need a car and, like, maybe there's is in service and their entrance isn't paying for that it. It happened to me when my I almost died because a female was driving my car <laughs> and totaled my vehicle and I was Ubering to work and stuff. And uh, granted, I was younger, but if I was older, like, if I knew about things like Turo, that's a very viable option compared to, like, a car rental company that's they have, like, 10 Corollas and you're mm-hmm. getting a tw- 2006 Corolla yeah. for $500 well, a day. Look at us, like what crazy. happened to it, us in LA. It was like young winter's fee for yeah. all the companies. I mean, Turo was involved too, but I, I understand. Yeah, shout out Gary with Young LA. He, yeah. hooked, he hooked me, Caleb, and Weston up with the Tahoe. That thing was sick. But like you're paying, it was like 180 a day for like a Camry Yeah. over over in LA. It was crazy. Like, bro, we're having And when we were looking hours. for 180 a day, we were seeing some pretty sick things on Turo. Yeah, yeah. Like we yeah. were we were gonna look at like the, the Aston Martins, the, the the vantage that we saw. Mm, Aston Martin. Yeah. So <laughs> can I Turo my Maxima and get an X6? You can make eighty dollars a day base for your Maxima. You can put it on my Turo account. It doesn't matter if it's in your name or not. I can put it on my account as long as you have your own personal insurance and you will make 75% of what it gets rented out at. So let's say you make, or let's say somebody pays a hundred bucks for it. Turo makes 25, you make 75. And that's just part of like the insurance. That's how they make money. That's how they're able to cover cars. And I mean, I know Turo has their own insurance too. And theoretically I could also 
because I'm, I'm still paying off my maxima. It's like around 400 a month. But also, let's say I got like a new X6. I could rent out that X6 a couple days a month and the monthly payment would be covered and I could drive it the rest of the days. For any X6 or X6M, it is the number one highest grossing car in Houston. So you will make per year 200% ROI on the car. So that means you just make 200%, 200% of the car, basically. So six months and the car is paid off. So you can make a lot. Of, I mean, you can make a lot. But of I'm money. not driving it because I'm having to rent it out. You can still drive it, though. But okay. Here, then, then you get into the issue. Like, oh, crap. Well, I have this X6. I have basically like one of my dream cars. What do I do now? You go buy another car. Because now mm. you have this stated income on your credit where you're making yeah. five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 a month. Let's just say, for example... You can use that to go out and say, hey, I'm making consistent income. I need to go out and buy another car. And then you can either buy it out on a business, which getting a business credit loan is completely different. That's just more stuff to get into, which is just hard to explain because there's so much stuff to get into that. But once they see that, hey, you're making this income from here, and then you have income from what you do now, they're going to give you a crazy like low interest rate, plus you're able to get as many cars as you want, basically. Okay. So you, for someone who's like interested in this, they should they just start casually renting out their own car you think they should go ahead get a new car that's like a safe car that so is the demand on turo good enough to where most like people listening to this right now be like could go get a, like a solid car and would make the income necessary like pay it off at least break even for a bit and then start making profit absolutely my car's been on turo for about a month now and i've already made more than what my car payment is so now yes. that's it's kind of crazy because brand new account Literally brand new account. And for me, I actually had to do it in my dad's name. So my, my name on Turo is John because my dad's name is John. And so everybody calls me like, hey, hey, John, thank you so much for the ride. Like, it was an awesome car. Don't send this video to Turo. <laughs> no, it, it, it wouldn't matter because okay. I'm, I'm dropping it off for John. Oh, you know? you're, yeah, exactly. Right. You're the middleman. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but no, like, you don't have to be of age, you don't have to be 21 to rent out a car. You can use it on your parents' name as long as each car has insurance and you're on the insurance thing. It doesn't really matter. But you can rent out any car. It does not matter what it is, it will get rentals. It's better for like the Turo algorithm if you have trips, if you have reviews, because it's only going to boost you even further. Because nobody's going to rent a car that has no reviews and no trips, most likely. I mean, for me, I got like my first rental within a few days and I had... No trips and no reviews. But then again, it was just the car that really drew people in. Okay. So if someone got, went and got a Camry with no reviews, what would they? That would probably rent out. Because Camry is it's, it's, it's the number one car. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that would get reviews very fast. What so ha- just what don't know like shit boxes. I mean, you can, bro. You can get a, a Chevrolet. <laughs> $30 a day. No, <laughs> you can. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Like, whether it's dented. So what I'm hearing is there's a demand in all like price ranges. Okay, let's say Turo. that... You're a family going to Disney World. You have saved up a lot of money for it. Or not a lot, but like you've saved enough money and you don't make that much money. But you want to take yeah. your kids on a family vacation maybe once every three yeah. years. You're budgeting for a cheaper car. You can't go out and rent a car at like the at Hertz or Enterprise because it's yeah. just too expensive. So you need a, a cheap, affordable car. You're going to go for the cheapest one in Turo. It's the easiest and it's 30, 40 bucks a day. Do you dr- do they pick up the car or do you have to go drop it off to so the person? So it is a 70 or $65 option to drop off and pick up the car. So I oh, take it to them it. and I just have Grace take me and I just give her some gas or I mean, I just pay for everything for Grace pretty much. Or today I just Ubered and I kind of talked to the Uber guys, like, hey bro, like I'm literally going to go pick up my car and I was like, if you have any like extra cars at your house, like this is something that you could totally do or even like yeah. stop Uber because he had, like 8,000 trips on Uber mm. and that's just nonstop miles back and forth. Yeah. You can make more money on Turo than you can on Uber. I mean, Hypothetically, because my M5 can make it $30,000 a year. Damn. And if I pay like 10 to 15 a year for car payment, because I'm going to refinance 30000 total or 30000 profit? Total. But okay. you're making fifteen grand a year. Yeah. I mean, that's just like from the numbers that I've seen so far. I mean, yeah. that's just what I can so make. You're pay, you're, you're making the payments and then you have a little, you have some extra. It, that's just free money. And you Turo, can, you can Turo, go get another car with that. Exactly. Turo yeah. covers any incidental, so any damage, anything. Like, let's say there's a spill in your seat. you got to pay for somebody to help get the spill out. Turo pays for it. Let's say somebody scratches or keys it. Turo pays for it. Let's say somebody totals your car. To- Turo will give you a crazy, crazy number to replace the car. And it doesn't even go okay, on your Okay, so own you don't thing. have to stress about them making a big mistake and, like, destroying your insurance and stuff. No. Because Turo is, like... Yep. 
and you just for the state of Texas, you have to have valid insurance, whether it's commercial yeah. insurance or personal insurance. You just have to valid insurance. Okay. But literally anybody can do it. And then maybe you have your, your Turo car. Let's say you don't even have a job. You can do Turo when your cars aren't rented out. Do DoorDash, Uber Eats. Maybe you, I mean you can do Uber Eats, DoorDash, Lyft, Uber, and Turo all at once. Dude, that that's just like so many different sources of income that you can make from one car. But yeah. it, it's like because I I actually told some of my friends this before. Like, I was like, guys, like, what are y'all doing? Like, why are y'all even here? Like, y'all supposed to be working. Like, oh, we're in school. Like, okay, you can still work during school. Or, I mean, not during, but like after school. Because they just go out like after school and do nothing. And like yeah. for me, I didn't go to college, but I think college is worth it if you're going into certain fields. Yeah. But if you're going for like, oh, doctor, I'm lawyer. For, yeah, exactly. And like, oh, that's also your path. Like, you'll be fulfilled doing that. But like, you go to college for communications or business, like, really? Yeah. You're just going for a degree at that point. Or it's like, like you're, you're you going can, for you can get experience. like five books that would take an absolute dump on the chest of a business degree. Absolutely. Yeah. And just speaking to somebody that's like already in business. You can learn more from just talking to somebody that's successful in business than going yeah. to college for like two That's years. one thing that all a lot of the big uh, business entrepreneur, YouTuber, and content creators are like, if you can, find a mentor. Absolutely. And you I are know. a mentor for yeah. people. Did you have a mentor? I, I did. I did. Okay. My business partner, uh, I don't want to say his name for privacy, but more on the civil industry, I've learned so much from him. And he went to school for, I think it was like physiology, so maybe like that. But he had a degree and he didn't use any of it. His other business partner on the other supplement side, he ha- I think he has like double masters or something like that. Didn't use anything. Hmm. He just used, like he, he went in business with, it was the, the two guys and their dads. They go into business. They started this crazy huge company. Now they're absolutely crushing it. And like, look at Jacob. Jacob was his double, ma- double masters, right? And what is he doing? Not using it. Yeah. But then again, Depending, like, like that's like one in a thousand. Like, you can't just expect to make a, a career out of fitness, because that's what happens with people right now. And like in Alpha Lane, there's like they'll fly down here, like, you know, we're gonna make so much money, we're gonna blow up. That's not the case. Come out here with a plan, yeah. already like making money, and then you can. I also blow up. think, granted, changing your scenery is huge, and like me moving out so young, like made me develop so fast as a person. But I will say. You should be able, like, I was ma- I was able to make YouTube videos at home, and I did. Not as often as I should, not the highest quality, because I was still young, like, learning, but I was. And there's some people th- that are, think, I just have to live in Houston and go to Alpha Land, and it's just going to happen. Like, the content's going to be there. It's like, no, like, like our, our boy Max Taylor, he lives in, like, bumfuck Utah, <laughs> lives at some random gym, and he gets 100K a video because yeah. he's Max Taylor. Like, you shouldn't, like, you don't need, for the fitness people or whatever, or, like, Mainly for, for the fitness people, you don't need to be at Zoo. You don't need to be at Alpha Land to find that success. And if you think you do, you already ha- you already have a losing mindset. And I will say, Houston is not cheap. No, Houston is expensive. If you go, if you move here, let's say from like California, California is expensive. That then you come to Houston, it's not much cheaper. Yeah. But there's more things to do in California than there is in Houston. You go, you move out to like Missouri City or Sugarland. Yeah, Houston's boring. What I is in Sugarland? What is over here? Like they come over here, thinking like, "Oh, it's gonna be so much fun! Like we're gonna do all this." It's and that. literally just Alpha Land and clubs, and but clubs they're not even in Sugarland; they're in downtown Houston. Yeah. So if you want to move here for drive. the clubs and the, and the gym, move to downtown Houston, then you're gonna pay twenty times more. Yeah. Because like an apartment here, I don't like downtown Houston. I like it because I have connections over there, and I know that I can. Yeah, but I meant in terms of just like coolness. Crazy. Like when I walk around downtown, I'm like, "This is whack," and then I go to places like I wouldn't want to live there, but like places like San Antonio, like they're downtown the River Rock. I'm like, oh, "This so is nice. sick. This is dope." Yeah. And we, because we stayed there uh, a couple years ago. So I do have a question regarding the Turo thing. I do think that's going to, a lot of people are going to be very interested in that. But for you, who has a very high net worth, like you said, if you like do your M5 and make 30 grand a year, like people would argue that that's not worth your time. Why? Because you could technically make more money elsewhere. I could, but also I can invest the money that I'm making to make me even more money. Yeah. And so let's say I make an extra two thousand dollars a month. It's actually two thousand dollars that I didn't make. So maybe I mean maybe I'm making let's say multiple six figures a month. I can just add two thousand dollars a month. Maybe I just want to like go out and, and buy an Airbnb property. Yeah. That money that I can make from the profit of my car being rented out goes towards a property to pay for it if I need to. Because if I buy something, I make sure it either holds value, it's a cash asset. Or it can make me money. Because yeah. otherwise, if I'm just buying it for no reason, like 
That's stupid. That's, that's how you lose money. I'm just imagining you having to like drop off cars and it takes you like an hour out of your day. I feel it, like that's a value time. amount of time. It, it's, I, I mean, you got to have free time. That's I, true. You I, can I, like I, throw I on a podcast or an audio book exactly. and something. And that's fair. I can't work 15 hours I was just a day. thinking in terms of like what audience members would think like, oh, if he makes all this money, why is he talking about 30 grand a year? But I guess that's true that like. That's if, just for one car. Like, yeah, it's just one car. And there's like plenty of Think side about hustles. it a year from now, whenever I have 10, 20 cars. You're gonna have a fleet. Then it's going to be like, okay, you're making like 300K a year. And now it makes sense. That's Now it's a whole other like crazy like CEO income that you're making yeah. that you wouldn't have already been making. And then I can that's go true. hire, let's say I hire you to manage it all. You can make 50% of that income. And cool. then I can just build another business around that. Just buy more cars, buy more cars, make more money. And the end, like, let's say you have one customer, you're not gonna make one much money from one customer. The more customers and more revenue, the, the more sales you get, you make more money from that. But like, I mean, you gotta start somewhere, right? Yeah. So right now you have you still have your Supra, you just got the M5 Comp. But like, not talking about Turo or what whatever for you. I know you have the money to get whatever car now, but what is like the the dream car? I'm going to like get back to that in a second, but for the whole cash asset thing and like I'm in debt for the M5, but I'm having it pay for its debt. Yeah. So it makes sense. Yeah. I have money to also, pay for it and that, I can pay it off. That looks good. On exactly, credit. Yeah. exactly. Exactly. And so the car pays for itself. So it's like a no brainer because I mean, I still enjoy the car. I drove it here. I literally picked it up earlier today. I absolutely love the car. You, it's you, stage is two it on currently like kind of 50 50 you have it. And then it's on Turo? No, because it's only been rented out like like it gets rented times. out only like one time. I mean, I mean one day. How many days out of the month do you think you'll be renting it out? I think about 15, 15, 20. That's not bad because you still. But have then 10, again, if, I think, if you it. think about it, I'm driving it there. I'm driving it whenever it's free, and I can't drive it. Let's say like on a Sunday, like bro, what am I gonna do on a Sunday? I, I'm working. I'm in the house. I'm doing. I'm That's just taking the thing with Sunday. me and you is like we do just work from home. Exactly. Even and if we want to drive, we the thing drive with that like much. the fitness influence is like, bro, if you're working on your, like if you're filming, if you're editing, rent out a car, have that pay for your rent. Like my apartment now is, is just a big write off. I work in every single room in the house. At least that's what I say. Yeah. Because I, I mean, I could just work out with my laptop in the second yeah, bedroom. I've logged in every room. In the yeah. House. I, I was working on my phone on the toilet. <laughs> yeah. But no, like it's just a write off. And then I'm going to rent that out. And the money that I'm going to make from my current apartment will pay for itself, plus a new apartment, which I'm getting uh, in post Oak Houston. Like it's like an, oh, it's like it's like Upper Houston. It's, it's like the nice part, but I'll be living free, and so it's going to pay. So Airbnb will pay for my current apartment, which is like three grand a month, and then my next apartment, which is like four or five. But I'll live free, and I won't have a, a car payment because Turo's making me money on that, and I won't have a house payment because Airbnb is paying for that. So then. That ten grand ish that I'm making from just those two things in total, whether it's profit or not, like I'm gonna make a thousand dollars profit out of everything else. That thousand just goes in my pocket basically, and I can use the money mm. to invest. Nice. But that's basically like ten thousand dollars a month and just bills and stuff that is already paid for itself. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, not with the apartment, of course, but with the BMW is like once it's paid off, and if you ever decide you d you're done with Turo. You still have the car. Yeah, exactly. And you, you could have a whole fleet. It's paying for itself. It, yes, it is getting wear and tear, but Turo pays for wear and tear, so I'm not really oh. too worried about that. And, and I'm sure and the drivers are pretty care. Like the drivers oh, that absolutely. are going to rent an M5, they're going to treat it Absol how it should be treated. So the dude that rented it yesterday, he, he rented it literally like two weeks ago, and he dropped off yesterday at nine o'clock in the morning. He paid me an extra 70 bucks to deliver it to him early, and I did, and that was an extra 70 bucks. And so. He was using it to take his wife on a wedding anniversary date. That's sweet. So it's awesome. like, bro, they're, they're driving it, just yeah. barely driving it. He just wants a nice car. One dude just drove it for like seven hours one Sunday. I'm like, I wasn't doing anything else. Yeah. I made a couple hundred bucks. Like, bro, I was just sitting in my house anyways. The car is just sitting outside. And I'm like, why would I not do this? Because yeah. it's just easy money. Like, otherwise, I'm just losing money on the car, basically. Yeah. It seems like it's a no-brainer and it's... It's early enough to where, because like maybe the Toro market might look different in a few years, but right now that seems like one of the popping things, the way you describe it. Absolutely. And now I feel like, now I, now I want an X6. And X6, so I was going to buy the Porsche 718 because that's that's the second. Actually, I think they're, they're flipped. I think the Porsche 718 came in as the first and then the X6 is the second, but they're very, very close. I was going to buy one recently, but I was like, let me just wait. Let me take somebody else's advice for 
not buying just straight luxury cars and just buy like 10 cheap cars. Yeah. Because what I was going to pay for the 17 came in, it was going to be like 55000 for the car, no money down, and then have like a $1,000 a month car payment. Or I can just buy four or five like Camrys and like five minivans basically for the same price or close to the same price. And that makes me significantly more money yeah. than the 718 would make me. Because the 718 has a higher car payment. Maybe I, I make $1,000 on it, but then also a camera can make me $1,000 a month with way less car payment, mm. 200 bucks a month. So but what's your dream car? My dream car is, I, I get asked this a lot, and I don't know. I think that I just need to drive more cars. Cause, That's a good answer. And I mean, I don't want a Bugatti. Like what, I'm not Andrew Tate, but like in what world is a Bugatti practical? Like unless you're- Reflexing on the broke boys. Unless, unless you're Steve Hamilton, which I love the guy. I wish I could meet him one day. He has the billionaire industry that he has. He's from industries and like my business model is kind of like what he's doing now. And so if I wanted to meet him, that'd be awesome. Just talk to him. But he has a huge collection of cars, the triple F collection. They have tons of cars. But if I'm not doing that, then right now, why would I just buy a Bugatti for myself? Like if I'm going to buy a Bugatti, it's going to be to just give back to others and just like have people experience the car, sit in it, rev it, start up. That's what I would use it for. But then it's also like a write-off because you're basically giving it to charity. Yeah. And so you find different loopholes into yeah. buying these cars. And the thing about Andrew Tate is like, you could tell they're very passionate about cars because they have like over 20, they have a fleet, but also the Bugatti has now like part of his brand. But for me, like, where would I put it? I'm in downtown Houston. It's dangerous. I'm going to get robbed. It is dangerous. Somebody's going to key it. Something's going to happen to the car. It's not reasonable to buy one. Maybe if I'm a 75 year old man with an entourage of just freaking, maybe 60 year old, six years old with like security behind me and just a mob of freaking other supercars behind me where they can just kind of surround me. Yes, but like for a 22 year old, I'd say like having a Bugatti, why? What about, okay, what if you're a 28 year old with, 50 mil in the bank, what car are you getting? Or are you getting a car? Well, I'd be getting a car, but... Yeah, but, like... I don't think anything would change, because... No, I'm not asking what would change. I'm asking, like, what would that car... Do you have any idea what that car would be, or a couple ideas that you would want to drive a few? I or think is it, like, open to whatever supercar right now? Well, I have... My my Super, my N5, Super drives great. I love it. I don't care how much it costs. It's an incredible car. It's pretty cheap for the value that it yeah. gives you. And the M5 is an amazing car. I mean, yeah, I've I driven tell. a lot of cars, but the M5 is absolutely amazing. It can hit insane speeds so freaking fast. I love the car. Um, I've driven R8s. I've driven Huracans. I've driven a lot of cars. And I love R8s. I have a 720S coming in March. And so that's kind of like a dream car. But I think like a P1 would be a dream car from, from McLaren, which is like a mm. couple million, I think. Mm. Or like a Pagani Zonda or Wyra, because that was like my dream car. Actually, my Classy. my profile pick from like 2000, like like way, 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 like like whenever the the Zonda came out. Yeah, that was my profile pick. My, yeah. my username was like Boss Two Four Six Eight. <laughs> Dude, that's such, a, that's such a middle school thing. The profile picture of like a random car. And just it was it was boss, a Zonda, like a boss. No, really, like if I can find that account, I'll have to show you it. It's literally the a Pagani Zonda. I've been in cars for so long. I mean, growing up, I went to car shows at the Energy Stadium or whatever it was, like Georgia Brown Convention Center, and I was always a big fan of Porsches. So it's not a dream car, but I would love to have a, a 9 or 911 Turbo S. I wouldn't buy a new one because they're just outrageously expensive, and I don't see any reason to. Um, they're going to drop pretty soon, though. But I think that a 911 Turbo S, I wouldn't buy it for myself, but I'd buy it for my mom because that's one of her dream cars as well, just like a 911. And... Obviously, I'd get to experience it, too, because I'd show her how to drive it, right? So, probably like a 911, and then, like, dream car, dream car. I've always loved Ferrari 488 GTBs for some reason. I feel like when you get to a certain level of rich, like, at least having one Ferrari is kind of a, a stamp of approval. Honestly, right now, I really want a Rolls-Royce Cullinan. A Cullinan. I, I don't know why, but... My that buddy would, has two of them. Yeah. Bro, they're just such baller cars, in my opinion. Well, I was going to bring up, and I'm sure you would agree, is that there's a lot of people that just shit. It's mainly, like, broke people, but they shit on the idea of, like, having a car. It's like, oh, that's just for social validation, which some of it is. Who cares? We we play the hierarchy games of money, and there's still the social aspect. But also, like, say you did have a colon in, I think that's an asset in a lot of ways in terms of not even if you, like, use it in your brand or pictures or whatever, but, like, simply for other people seeing you in it 
the networking and the opportunities. Uh, yes, so yes. I think it's foolish for people to say, oh, a car, that's a waste of money. Like you're just being immature. Like you don't need to drive fast. You don't need the approval of other people. Okay. First of all, driving fast and like getting approval of people is dope, but also the networking aspect. Like I hear, like you hear of people that they have like a decent car and they go to car shows and they'll meet people that make 10 X what they make and they can learn from them. Yeah. And that's like one of the big things that I'm, I'm big on. I mean, I have friends that have like just some insane cars, like literally stupid cars. And like, that's the same with, with like watches. I love watches. I need to buy more, but they're dropping really fast. I want to so watch. I don't want to just buy one now because like the watch, the watch that I buy is just too expensive. How I'm much like, is that AP? I don't know. I don't know what's worth now. I'm honestly scared. How much did you look. spend on that AP? I paid 167. Okay. But I don't want to, I mean, at the time. I feel that like I, that, that would be worth a lot more. Right. Now. But it's a 50th anniversary AP chronograph. And at the time that I bought it, it was worth, I got it from a private dealer. It was worth 220000 But the mark has dropped since then. And it yeah. has, I mean, I can buy Cartier, like Santos, like the watches, like skeletons for like 7000 under MSRP new. That just, I mean, dude, it's bad. There was, so date I dates, need a watch. Date just. How much is a date just? Like, like twelve to 15000 That's the safest pick. Okay, maybe I can't get that yet. <laughs> Rolex, Oyster Perpetual, a Breitling, IWC. Love those watches. But the big heavy hitters like RMs, specific RMs, those are going to always hold value. But this one holds value pretty well. I'm just scared to know what it's worth. I just want to make sure it's worth like at least what I paid for it. Yeah. Because I thought it was a loss. Like, of course, we are facing a recession right now, but that's one of those things that it will rise. And this is the cash to asset. So maybe like I sell it now and I buy it back in like four months because it's going to get it ugly. Low. Yep. No, no. It's the economy is going to get ugly. Springtime yeah, I mean, comes. Can, we can tell now. Because I'm trying to buy an R8 for like 100 grand. Like a 2017 R8 for $100,000. They're like 135, 140. I want right to see you with five new watches and a couple new cars in like six months. <laughs> it's like my Black Friday. Would stay the same, Recessions though. are Black Friday for no, rich people. Bro, my income would stay the same. It's probably going to go up a little bit. But like, dude, like, I don't know, just be more affordable. I, I don't know. I want to buy an R8 for like 110, 120,000. Like I could buy that now, but then like if I wait a little bit, it's gonna be worth twenty k less. I buy it for like 100, 110, then that's a deal right there. Because it will go up, yeah. but it's ugly right now. Yeah, ugly. But also like, you're not selling it anytime soon. But also, you do just get to have it and yeah. wear it. And but it's like it. having a nice car. Like you, let's say you go up some money like at a bar. Like dang, he's a nice watch on. Let's say the, the other guy sees like he's a nice watch on. So it's a conversation. Yeah. And then he will see you as a high profile person, somebody that provides value, a high net worth person. Someone back somebody here? No, they're just walking around. And so that can be like an in to get into like what they do and how you can like work together to make some money. Not that the money matters, but it's just like building relationships and then their money's just there. I would say money matters. Well I wouldn't say not not using people. Okay, so money does matter, but I don't know. I feel like to a certain degree, like if I'm making like forty, fifty thousand dollars a year, and I want to have a family, like money would definitely matter. Yes. And because like you want to have, a, you're gonna have a house, you're gonna have car payments, house payment, you're gonna have a lot of insurance, you're gonna have a lot of bills, and money absolutely matters. And so it'd be a lot better if that person can make like a hundred thousand dollars a year because it'll be a lot more comfortable. Maybe have yeah. like a couple of hundred bucks to like invest. But also, you can still make a lot of money with a forty to fifty thousand dollar income if you just know how to utilize that money, and leverage it. Bro, it can take you from forty thousand dollars a year to like forty thousand dollars a month, like very quickly. You need to know where to invest. And it's not like investing. Like, let me take out half the money that I'm making a month. Let me just put it into stocks. No, no. It's like, what business can I start? And you don't even need money to start a business. People are just to, to buy a business or to open a business. People don't realize that. Like, I can walk into a bank right now and say, "Hey, there's a business for sale. It's five hundred thousand dollars, and it makes like let's say three hundred thousand dollars per year." Be like, absolutely, here's 500 grand and go buy the business because it's making $300,000 a year and profit. And then in two years, the business is already mm-hmm. paid for. And then everything after that, it's just money, money, money that, that's just going into your account. So and that's someone, how it is with my Shopify stores because I'll sell them yeah. because they're making a lot of money. And it's a 3x multiple of the stores, but they're, they're paid off in like a year or two. Yeah. So let's say a kid is listening to this and they have not a lot in the bank, like maybe one to a couple thousand just what they've saved too up much. from their from their jobs okay too much whatever what would be 
name a couple and like you can explain them a little bit, but you don't have to like go too in deep into detail, but like the best, and this is like a trending thing on YouTube too, but like the best business ideas to start in 2022. So first thing, assess where you're at. If you have a personality and you think you can go somewhere, YouTube, hundred percent. Invest in YouTube because that can that investment into YouTube can yeah, make you talking my language. Bro, Airback is like making like a, almost a million a month at this point. He's making a lot of like money. Like AdSense or just total? I think total. Yeah. And he's he's bro, he's he's crazy rich. And he just started recently this year. Like, like past two years. But like if you have a personality, you think you can go far just with consistency, YouTube, hundred percent. If you can't do YouTube, try so there's a few things you can do on YouTube. You can hire like people have done it before. You can hire editors, hire like speakers, and for I've cheap, seen that. for very yeah. cheap, just to I've run, seen people like, blow like up with text to speech and just like default stock footage. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just like like two minute long Discord like videos where just the Discord chats. Yeah, like bro, they get like five ten million views. It's crazy. Like the the the, the text to speech Reddit stories. But all over TikTok. Maybe you can put something like link in your bio, or just have like a sponsor segment through the video. Like you can make a lot of money for that. I think I wouldn't doubt if those people aren't making like fifty grand a month, hundred percent. Like if they're if they're pulling that many views, they have AdSense. Obviously, it's gonna be a little bit lower because they're, they're pretty short videos. But then you have sponsors. They then you have like link in bios and stuff like that. Maybe they have like an Amazon affiliate store. They can make a lot of money from that, and that can be easily like recreated if you just know how to watch the right videos, just to research on it. You can start drop shipping with basically no money. So drop shipping is still a viable option. In Absolutely. 2022. But I say if you're not making money, continue doing it. What company can just build you a company? Me, you tell me that when I'm almost a grand in the hole for my drop shipping venture. <laughs> because you made three stores. So I need to make 10 stores. No, you need to focus on one store. I did focus on one store. And just only, fo- okay. But the store that was focused on is a little bit hard to market. I thought it was a cool looking thing. No, 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 no. It was a great store. And I, I, dude, what hurts me the most is like, I started this, I tried it, the ads weren't converting. And then I see a reel with like 1.6 million likes of the same product. That is an issue with current day marketing. You just have to know what to say and how to get away from like the gray area of Instagram. So for you, it was adult toys. And I mean, I'll that was say my, that. that was my first venture, but. I quickly switched into like but that AliExpress could, but shit. We, we saw the potential in that stuff because you did get a sale. I did it's get a sale. It's not like you failed. No. But you did get a sale. And I said... Maybe I'll, we'll go back one day. It's I'm like start uh, selling penis pumps and <laughs> dick hangers. You could probably make a lot of money. if you, Especially if those are run on Facebook ads. You uh, you got to find your way to market those products. And this is for anybody listening right now. They can do those 100%. You just got to learn how to say the right words and to market them. You don't even need to have any paid marketing first off. If you learn Google Ads, Google Analytics, Google Merchant Center, Google Search Console, learn all of those and then learn different tactics on how to be number one on the search ranking for whether it's your product or your store. So you can rank without paying Google to be without ranked. Without paying a dime. Just SEO. And then whenever you do pay for marketing, dude, you're guaranteed number one spot for whatever it is. I mean, I have search ads for one of the companies that I'm working with right now. Like, It's dirt cheap ads, dirt cheap ads. And we're number one for all the keywords, all like search terms. It's just, it's, it's too easy because we have so much data from the, from, from before, from just running community or just organic clicks. Now that I've used all, all that organic, or, organic data, I can use that to like really define my ads and optimize them to where we're paying like pennies on the dollar of just, or just pennies to get crazy sales. Like I'm pretty sure I can say like average cost per conversion for the entire campaign for one of them is like $2. And for I can say one day, I think it was either 2020 or 2021, I had a Google search. No, 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 not, not search ad, but it was a Google shopping ad. I had budget set super high, but I had optimized the campaign so much to where if it spent the money, then it's going to spend it and make a lot of sales. And so the budget for that day was like 20 grand and it spent 12. But that day that it did that, it was like recorded on a store because not only did we have organic sales from all of our social yeah. medias, but also we had... $212,000 from revenue from that stock shopping ad directly onto our store. Wow. So it was, and then we must spent 12 grand. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like, once you really set it up the right way, like spending $12,000 on a day for one campaign seems like a lot, but at scale, no, absolutely not. Cause maybe you spend five grand the next day. Maybe you're making 80 K 120 K like, dude, that's crazy money. And so like I can, I can get an ad account right now, spend a thousand to 1500 bucks, make 10 K in sales. 
and I have proof to show that. I can really show you right now that I'm doing that. Yeah. And no, I believe you. I've seen screenshots. That's for like any of my clients. I'm like, and that's that's the beauty of knowing like marketing for dropshipping is like you have your own like screenshots and you have your own stuff to show the clients. People want to get into social media marketing and they're like, oh well, I'm just getting into it. I don't really know much, but like, can you help me out? I'm like, no, I can't because you need to learn dropshipping. You need to learn marketing first. But like, well, why do I want to have a store? That's I'm just gonna so spend money people on people that want to do. Because we, we said YouTube, we touched on drop uh, drop shipping, even you can still organically market without ads. And now we're talking about marketing and you're saying they should maybe start with drop shipping before the marketing. Touching on the organic marketing side, Facebook groups are the strongest form of passive income you can make. Build a Facebook group so big to where you don't have to manage it at all. They keep the members in it manage it, the, the admins manage it. And it's just consistent passive income from there because they're talking about your products. If it's built around your products, zero income or zero like. Can you give like a hypothetical there. example of the what the product or the group chat would look like? It's it's a Facebook group. So like yeah, but like what? So you make a so let's say you're selling. What would be a good okay? Product? So I'll give an example. One of my groups, Form Pipes. Yep. We have affordable modding. It's like Audi R7, S7, S6, S8, and so forth, and. I've just built a group. It only has like 600 members, but it's still growing every single day. But all they talk about is just affordable modding in the group. And so I, I, I'd say I probably had 500 sales from that one group. Okay, so you're you're saying like it's for your foreign pipes, which sells like exhaust and stuff and stuff for car modding. However, the group chat isn't just you shilling that out. It's a center for people to come and discuss car modding. Mm-hmm. And they might even discuss mods that aren't from foreign pipes. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. However you're kind of like the the god of this little realm and you can just throw in little foreign pipes, mm-hmm. things here and there. Yep, absolutely. Okay. And one of my friends, Vadim, he has one of the largest networks on Facebook of Facebook groups. He has insane groups, bro. Like one of his groups has like 100, like 37,000 members. One group has like 50,000, 80,000, 30,000, 15,000. It's crazy the amount of reach that he has. And for his watch club, it's paid. You have to pay to post in it basically. So... He has something called Real Watch Buyers Group. So you have to pay $2,500 per year to be in the group. Or it's like up front, you can pay that for like a lifetime. And then it's like 500 bucks per year or like per month. I don't know. He has some like, like pricing structure set up. So you have to pay that. And that group alone has like 3,000 members, but they pay him yearly basically. And so you're making like 2,500 bucks upwards of $5,000 depending on what they charge at the time to be in the group. And that's, that group is just like a private watch group but you have to be in that group to post into a group of 30,000 members okay so you can pay to post in there or you can just like buy stuff from the group as well but like once again he's making like two and a half million three five five like five million a year from just that wow for just people wanting to post or what sell watches in the, in the groups but just the margins on watches like are crazy you. if you know who to talk to if you get a watch at msrp and if you flip it you can make more than the watch is worth which is crazy. To that think. is mind blowing. Like I didn't know it was like that. It's wild. It, it's, but you, you just gotta learn these these certain things. Like if you get a car at wholesale, you can sell it for twenty grand over, but it looks like retail. I mean, there's certain cars that don't really hold much value. Like, I mean, my car I could probably buy it for what I bought it for. To be honest, I, I, I like dealer auction. They're just hard to. Most exotics, dealers buy them at MSRP, for like unless they're unless they're used, then it's different. It's kind of hard to make money on that. You make money on the financing, but. You can get like a let's say an R eight for like one thirty at the dealer auction. You sell for like one thirty five. You only make like a five k market, but then again, the car note's so high. The interest payment is probably gonna be like a thousand dollars a month just for interest alone, and that's where the money's made. But you can make like thirty grand from just financing an an, an exotic car. Wow! So there's a lot of money in that. And then for like for cheap cars, like so at our dealership that I have, we have buy here pay here cars, like eight thousand to like thirty thousand dollar cars. And there's really not much money up front, like on the, on the front end at least. Maybe we sell the car for 15000 we paid $14,000 for it. It just covers like employee cost. But on the financing side, you can make anywhere from like eight to $12,000 for like a $15,000 car. Because of the interest? Because on of the, the interest. Payment? Okay. Even if it's a low interest rate, like either way, there's still a lot of money in it. And the bank will pay that up front too. Because then you basically just got them their business. Mm, okay, so we have YouTube, drop shipping marketing and one of the things about marketing and organic is facebook groups we talked a lot about turo is there any other big ones there is one thing that is making 
people a lot of money, especially girls, not only fans. And this is a low cost entry thing. Yes. Okay. I'd say 90% of the people watching this have a phone. 95% have a phone. I would hope so. Yes. There is something called apartment locators. You don't need a real estate license. You don't need to work with a real estate company. All you have to do is walk into an apartment and say, hey, do you care if I take a, a video, a short video of five of your like, model, model apartments? I have a friend that does this exact thing. And he was saying, like, oh, well, if I get this person this apartment, I make two grand. Exactly. They will pay you a referral fee. Yep. Of uh, just one two thousand dollars per sign up. Maybe some places like you saw a penthouse, you're making five grand, mm-hmm. and that's a new thing that I want to get into, and I'll make a video on that too. But yeah. you just need a phone because our phones can shoot in yeah. sixty, or maybe one twenty or sixty, and you just can, make you, good content of like videos of apartments. Because I'll scroll here and there when I scroll reels, apartment videos pop up organically. They're not paying for it. I found my apartment from an apartment locator. Nice. I, I didn't add them to my thing because I, I kind of like I found it from them, but. Then I went to look, go look at other apartments and I went back to mine yeah. and I kind of forgot who it was, but I worked with some recently and dude, they are crushing it like three and four hundred thousand dollars a year. That's how much they're making right now. I have a friend who he worked at the, our gym in sales and he left to do the apartment locating and he's and doing, he, he didn't go back. So clearly he's dude, doing pretty it's well. It's literally a cheat code because you can post it on YouTube shorts and that's going to YouTube is going to recommend people in that area that video because they're showing apartments. They're going to see the data in it yep. in that area. So maybe you've been looking up on Google apartments in your area, bro. YouTube's going to show you that video. So it's an instant cheat code for just YouTube. It's, it's free marketing. It's yeah. like a free ad. With Instagram, the same thing. If they see data on Facebook that you're looking at apartments or if you like looking at other stuff, and also Facebook shares data with Google too, so they can kind of go back and forth. So if they know that you're looking up stuff for apartments, they're going to share that video that's an apartment in your area, they're going to show it to you. Yeah. And I've seen so many like, different apartment realtors or apartment locators that have like forty to 50,000 followers. Plus, you get paid to post on Instagram. If you are if you are a creator, Instagram will pay you to post to Instagram. I get paid 75 bucks per reel to post. That was on my main account. But now it's gone, which I'm going to get it back. But you get paid to post. And that's, and that's with 10K, which like some of these kids watching, they might have like, Four or five, eight thousand. But you don't even need ten k. You can just call up and say, "Hey, how can I get?" That's what I'm saying. I'm saying they do have a little bit of a base. Yeah. Yep. But you can build a apartment locator like profile in a month. Go to the highest end apartments in Houston or wherever you are, whatever city you're in. Just ask them, "Hey, can I just get a short? Like, I want to be here for thirty minutes. I want to get some videos for a few clients of mine. Just make yourself look professional. Go take videos of the of the apartments." Have them on your phone, edit them to look really nice, to the popular sounds, and then just put what it is, like apartments, two bedroom, upwards of like maybe four bedroom, starting out at 600 bucks a month or whatever it is, but show the nicest one first with an, a trending sound and post it. That's it. Yeah. And then put in, in your like bio, say like, or in your description, say like, if you want to learn more about this apartment, just DM me. Yep. And then whenever they go through the application process, you can send them over any, any information and they get added as their locator or realtor, and they get paid the huge fee, or the, like basically like, like, a, like a finder's fee. Yeah, and I think with apartment locating, you can break it down to its core, and I think this is one thing that is would be like a very good thing for people to look into, start making good money, is literally just selling things to people for someone else, like mm-hmm. affiliate marketing, apartment locating. Well, that basically You're like, hey, marketing. you should buy this building, you should buy this million dollar building. Okay, yeah, thanks for showing me this. I'm going to buy this million dollar building. And mm-hmm. then the company gives you 10 grand for selling that building. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They, they gave you more than that. They gave you a lot more, probably 30 grand. But like, I mean, they, they would pay you like an actual realtor. And bro, there's girls like in Houston that are making so much freaking money. And it's almost guaranteed for, let's say a guy, an older guy looking for an apartment to sign for with that apartment realtor, or yeah. apartment locator. Because... They're just gonna keep coming back. If you're yeah. an and you get to girl, you get to do tours with them, so you get to hang out with a pretty girl. Exactly. The for I mean, why would they not work with that one girl? But even if like, so Houston has a really big gay like community, and so maybe just an attractive guy. Like I could easily go out, just dress up nice, post myself, and I'm sure I'll have a lot of gay guys if I post it in like Montres area. Just like message me and say, hey, I'm looking for an apartment. Even if I know it's crazy, but even if they were just like looking for an apartment, they still pay me of it. Just yeah. to like, just to basically hang out with me without saying that. I know you know well, gay guys. I've seen you on the forums. <laughs> I mean, I have gay guys pay me just to talk to me. I've months. seen I've seen you on the forums when you were underage, and people are talking about how 
they want to have their way with you because you're yeah. a fit young lad. But the funny thing is they would talk about how I used to like scam them. And I don't want to say that I scammed them because then I'd probably go up on the forums because I know that they're going to watch this hundred percent and they'll watch every single bit of it. But I just worked with the gay guys. I never sent anything. Nothing is out there. You never find anything of me. And if it is, it's Photoshop because there's nothing. But I just I I'm about to start photoshopping naked images of you and <laughs> flipping them. Bro, you make a bag. That's that's number six side it's, hustle. It's, it's like Caleb's first like deep pick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just deep fake you. I'll literally download. Oh, you will, Kenny? I mean, I, I have some in the backlog that I could access, oh, but yeah. I'm gonna deep fake you onto it. Explore he- pa- explore page, horny men. Whether you're a guy or a girl. If you look really good, you will find some explore page horny men. I mean, I was basically doing what Andrew Tate was doing. Yeah. But and people said, hey, like, I want to come fly you out. Okay, pay for my pay for my plane ticket. I'll come see you. Pay for your plane ticket. You buy the refundable option. Spend a little, spend a little bit more. So you finalize so your plane ticket. And they say, hey, I need a few hundred dollars to get to you to pay for, like, Ubers and stuff like that. So that way they literally think that you're going to go to them. And they'll say you book a hotel, take the refundable option, and at the day that you come, or that you're supposed to leave, you cancel everything. You get all your money back. You block the person, or just say something happened. Maybe like my my ID is like yeah. inspired or something like that. Or like his, you're. I think you're. You were referencing because his cam girls would do this to men. Yeah, but yeah, no, like that was happening with Michael recently. Like that's something that I've done before. Like, and it was the same thing. Same thing with the cam girls. Like you can just tell them these certain things. Like I wasn't trying to reference, but it did. It did come up. But like, no, just do that. I mean, it, dude, he was going to make like 600 bucks, I think, for going out if you like pay for the plane ticket and you just got the money back. But I was like, bro, like you can make way more than that. Like you made like two grand at least. 600 bucks wow. is cheap. He's just, that's just a plane ticket, bro. Like pick the refundable option, make money from that. Nice. I have one more uh, if you're trying to make money business venture type thing. And it's it's like the most default advice. But like either ha- like if you have a skill and or develop a skill and you can most likely because we're talking about online. Um, you can sell it online. I mean, I have been editing videos and making videos for uh, almost 10 years now. And I was finally able to quit like my normal, not making much, like barely saving some money each month job at the gym because I knew how to edit videos. So it could be video editing. It could be thumbnail editing. Um, it could be voiceover, whatever, literally just look at what people are doing on Fiverr. But if you have a skill or you can develop a skill, like realistically, you could learn how to edit content in a couple months really well and I I was editing I was I think I I I can't say how much I started with because the company would get mad but I was making a a decent amount to where I was able to quit my gym job and I was still making a little bit more than the gym job and it was on a used $700 MacBook Pro that I I already had for a little bit so like Mm -hmm. the cost to entry was none granted I spent a lot of time learning that but that skill is making me money. One thing is you can have that skill. You're making money. You're good at it. Teach your friend how to do it. Get some other people that know how to do it. You just created an agency mm-hmm. and thumbnail agency, editor agency, voiceover agency, whatever agency. It doesn't even have to be content creation. I mean, marketing agency. And you, you teach the people, you run the people. You don't have to edit videos. You don't have to run the ads anymore. Your employees do it for you. And you just created a business. I, I mean, he's agencies are so big because, uh, like, since Amon God's, he's just blowing up. He's about to hit a mill. Everyone right. and their mom is trying to make an SMAA. They all DM me or go to my Discord. Like, hey, bro, like, I want to start, but I have, like, no experience. I'm like, bro, then you can't start. How are you going to start a social media agency if you have, like, a social media marketing, if you have no experience? You can't learn dropshipping, learn marketing, then get into the agency. Yeah. And there's videos online like, where people learn like, with, like, no experience or with no money. Like, good for them. They're winning a million. Because now they're putting videos out on like on YouTube, and now they're making money. They're from that. they're they're becoming the next wave of like gurus. Exactly. Like, but now they're getting clients from posting on YouTube. Yeah. And so it's almost like a chico for them as well because they can just post YouTube and it's just an infinite money glitch at this point. Yeah. We're seeing oversaturation of certain niches in the making money online space. What I saw the biggest is there was a direct correlation of Andrew Tate blowing up and thus more people in Hustlers University and me getting emails to my business email of people that want to do copywriting for me and they are the most dog shit draft like copy and paste 
like advertising their copywriting to me. It's the exact same every time. I saw this video. I really like how you fitness in this. I want to write, send you a three email I've sequence those, about how yeah. I can increase traffic to your website. I don't have a website. So they would talk about like Jack Factory. Like they don't, they think I own Jack Factory or something. Most default people. And I even, I remember applying to one. I was like, oh, are you from Hustlers University? He's like, no, I'm not. But my friend that does it is. So it's like, at least for like things like copywriting, like be aware if the market is oversaturated. But even if it's oversaturated, I was seeing the exact same default email copyright ads every day. If an email stood out, it would have stood out. I don't need a copywriter, but if I did, if if you are you can become good in any space even if it's oversaturated. So like I think there's still people that can like create SMMAs and like make it, but like you said, it's one in a million. And people like that will not make it because that's basically just cold calling or cold emailing or cold messaging. The people sending the emails to me aren't right. gonna make it. Imagine I started commenting on your stuff. I liked your stories. I like kind of interacted with like your stuff going on, and then I offered like my stuff for you. Maybe like I wanted to do copywriting stuff for like a week free. Yeah, you'd be more inclined to hire me if I'm doing a week yes. free of work. I've had people do that that want to that want to edit my videos. Yeah, but like if I'm like literally interacting with you as like a friend almost, then yes. you build that relationship with, with a person or client. You are ten times more likely to book that client versus just like hey, just offering your services right off the bat, basically. Because if you do that, you're almost automatically going to get turned down. Yeah. And that's the biggest issue people have with like, because I teach the Facebook strategy, like you out, do outreach on Facebook, but people will just offer their services right away. I'm like, don't do that. Become their friend, interact with their content, like like their stuff, share their stuff, comment on their stuff, like almost like compliment them. Maybe just like talk with them a little bit on like Facebook Messenger or Instagram DMs and kind of get familiar with what, what they do. Maybe you can have your pitch like, hey, like I actually run a marketing agency and I think that, I could honestly benefit what you're doing now. And they're like, oh, you know what? We are looking for somebody. And then you just go in from, well, there's a $2,000 a month client. And then there's, it just grows from there. Like there's a $3,000 a month client. Then there's a $30,000 a month client. I'm noticing a trend. Like we've talked about numerous different things, but like being more organic and authentic about how you approach getting clients in whatever endeavor is just way better than trying to brute force mass spam your way into something. Cause if you think about me, like if I make multiple six figures a month, I don't even have like an actual like storefront of my business because if I just reach out to people as a business, they may not see it as more like organic or just more like authentic. Right. They just they're working with, when they're, like, when they're working money. with Canales agency, Canales marketing versus, Oh, Caleb. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so like I actually did for a little bit, I had my own website going up. I had, my funnel setup, it wasn't even on ClickFunnels, it was just on my own website. And I reached out to people as a business on LinkedIn, but I almost had no success. And I've done it thousands of times as my own. And then I switched back to my personal thing. And as soon as I switched back, I had clients again. And it's not like I was losing clients, but I was just like, I want new clients so that I have my other employees so that they, that they can manage them. Because otherwise, like, I don't take on the, the, the higher paying clients or the people that I mentor because I want to focus on them. And then let's say that somebody pays me like two thousand, two thousand dollars a month as like a retainer plus whatever percentage that they pay me as well. That's gonna go to my virtual assistants or yeah, my, my people over in UK. So I have like UK and Australia right now. People that work right. for me. Virtual virtual assistants. I I'm starting to hear that a lot more <sighs> with like e-commerce and like entrepreneurs. And I'm not fully done with it because I'm I'm currently reading Millionaire Fastlane. But before that, I read like the first quarter of Four Hour Workweek, and that that's an older book. And even then, they're like get a, a VA but, but he says like get a VA from India they'll do everything for you and you can like really manage your time better do you have but you they're have like, VAs they're, bro they're like NPC VA or VA yeah NPC VAs we're just like it's those people that will like message you they're like the NPC VAs that's that's the problem with that like I have virtual assistants but they're not in India they're not in like Asia or China they're in UK they're like they're almost not trying to like be back like I don't know, like offensive. They're TV. like luxury VAs. Ex yeah, exact, exactly. Yeah. They're, they're like, like it's like it's like, like concierge. Black. Yeah, right. And they manage the clients more efficiently and just like in a more professional manner. And it frees up a lot of time for you. Mm -hmm. That you can go deliver to up. Like I say, <laughs> a fiber VA is like a five out of ten. But then if you build a relationship with somebody and then they become your VA, that's a ten out of ten. How did you find your VA? Facebook. Facebook. Actually, some of the people that I work, I, that work get, with I don't now, even have bro, Facebook. I'm the sleeping. The people that work with me now, they paid me first. They paid me. They went through my mentorship thing. Now they make a lot of money. They had their own stores and then they <laughs> they got into um, working with me. So now they're making a lot more. Nice. Yeah. All right. What is, you're only 18 years old. 
you're a millionaire, you currently live in Houston, you got a good life, your main things right now is being a mentor for people also trying to get to that level and the bread and butter right now, which is your marketing services. What is the, because you're only 18, there's so much more in the future, you're just getting started. What do you think is the next big step for you in terms of like maybe both business venture, but also just life in general? That's a great question. Um, I know that my, my next thing that I really want to do is just real estate because we're going to see, I mean, that's like in the next six months, we're going to see a big drop, especially, but I mean, interest rates are going to go anywhere. They're going to go higher, but house prices are going to go down a lot. So that's for business, but for life, just being able to spend more time with my family that I, that I moved out from. I feel that. And I, mean, I live six hours away from them now. And my parents, like not my mom, but on my dad, like he isn't in, in the best health, which I don't talk about at all. Yeah. But he's not. So I need to definitely need to spend more time with them. And I mean, I've even thought about like moving back in because I don't know how long. I don't know. I just want to, I don't want to get into that, but I'm young and I want to have like my own life and times are different than it was like 40, 50 years ago. It's completely different. So like even the stuff that your parents learned in school is way different than what we're learning now. Yeah. Every, I think people are starting to realize because our parents go to college, you get a decent paying job. Maybe you're making 50, 60, $70,000 a year. You get a house in their time, maybe grandparents time, but like house, $100,000, move into it, pay it off. Oh, now it's worth $500,000. It's not the same. And no. like, especially the college advice, but also I'm a lot of the old head, big money people like, it's like they're, they give advice on like how to make money, how to be successful, but it's almost like they're gatekeeping. They're not selling what they did to make themselves rich. They tell you, oh, yeah, buy a house and you'll own it in 20 years. Um, invest in really safe stocks and work your, and grind your nine to five. Like, don't, don't buy $5 coffee. Where's the fun in that? I no, mean, that's, little, no, that's just NPC life. But that I've learned, like life can be taken you the next, like, instantly. We could have a freaking meteorite hit us right yeah. now. You never know. Like, I, my heart could stop. All these people are living a lifestyle and planning on, I'm going to be a millionaire when I'm 65 years old. Because of the money that just basically built interest. I mean, you could do that way sooner than that. Like, yeah. you could just invest more money into your 401k or Roth IRA. Like, you can cash out in 15 years and become a millionaire. So, I could. So, someone it, with a nine to five right now could be a millionaire with a Roth at IRA 30, in 15 at 30. years. If they invested in 15, yeah, absolutely, in 15 years. If they invest, what they're supposed to invest, like eight to sixteen thousand dollars a year into a Roth IRA four hundred one k in like, in like, um, I guess fifteen years, you can cash out a million dollars or even two million dollars. In that's just like on average. If you just do it the right way and just invest into the right stocks, it can be worth three million dollars. Like imagine I invested, like, let's say the whole fifteen or fifteen years. Crap, we have to cut this part out. That dude threw me off. Oh. No, you were still sitting. No, because he was like staring at me. I was trying yeah, to Yeah, janitor just walked by. Okay, so imagine you invested like eight thousand to sixteen thousand dollars per year. It just compounds annually, and annually, <laughs> annually. <laughs> but like the money you can make from that, versus like just investing like two hundred dollars a month or like three hundred dollars a month, you can you can basically max it out and you can cash out like at at thirty or at like thirty five years old and half a million dollars. But let's say like you. But also, in, you're so. I, I understand and I think that is good advice, but I also think this is, it's for a certain kind of person that wants to play the game safe and maybe their values are just raising my kid and having my wife and like having a decent car, decent house type thing and I'm, I'll make a million in like 15 years and I think that's like the investing, the Roth IRA, all that stuff is great for them and then I think there's another group of like, I want to be a millionaire within three years. And it's like, maybe should that money for them be more invested in the business ideas that we were discussing? Why can't you do both? You 100% can, but I'm saying these people that want to become a millionaire in a couple of years, in 15 years, maybe they'll have 20 million. So yeah, it's, it's dope that they got more in the Roth IRA, but I think there's also slightly different um, priorities. But imagine I wanted to do like the 15 year out where you basically get your money a lot, a lot faster in 15 years. And I invested in like Tesla. I invested in Amazon. I invested in Google. I invested in Apple. Imagine I did that 15 years ago. And like the money that, I mean, you can do it with like Roth IRAs. You can invest in certain companies. Instead of having that $1 million, like that was my goal. And dude, it'd be like $80 million. Because in 15 years ago, if I invested in those certain companies, it's. Yeah. But like hindsight's 2020, you know, how, how, how much those companies have exploded. Like, yeah, they could, 
potentially do the same thing in the next 15 years, but they're also, they kind of hit that and now they're, like when you say Google, Amazon, now people assume, people just think of the Microsoft, people think those are safe stocks. It's like, I'm not going to make a ton of bank, but my money is at least going to keep up with inflation. And the thing is with that, like, I don't know how much bigger Amazon will get because I know that on one of the podcasts I was listening to, I think from like Full Sin, it was Elon talking and he was saying how we're not growing in population. I think we're actually declining. And that's why he's trying to have like all these celebrities are having like a lot more kids and stuff like that. How, what a shock as like Western society gets more and more over sexualized and the idea of the nuclear family, the idea of a masculine male and a feminine female and leading your legacy through raising kids, the idea of that gets destroyed. Oh, the population's declining now. Like everything is going down. Like we're declining. It's Our almost like it's manufactured. Trashed. It is. I mean, look at what happened with when it got overblown by the media. And careful. <laughs> now we can, we can, we can oh, wait, go I, into I that. can't even say that's a whole, the whole conspiracy thing is like a whole podcast in itself because I could rant for so long. I don't think I can say without you getting a little badge on the, on the thing. But what is the next thing for you? Because, okay, moving home. Yes. I don't think there's a next thing. It's just, it's just like scaling just wrong, what you just, have now. Just wrong, basically. Like, I want to have, I want to open up a shop, a, a, a car shop. And that's like, have, is that like a passion fulfillment yeah, type thing? Yeah, absolutely. Like you almost, you don't ca- like that doesn't have to make you a million dollars. It's like just the passion. I don't care if I break it. I don't care if I lose money. I just want to see cars in my Fun. shop. Bro. Yeah. I just want to be able to drive like clients cars that I work on and I want to work on the cars too. Like I want to do a little bit yes. and I'll find money to like, dude, that'd just be so fun. Cause then like me marketing those cars, it, bro, if I'm if I put a video out of a Ferrari doing donuts, that's an instant hundred K views. Yeah. Like I, I posted a video on my forum pubs account that has 140,000 views it was a Ferrari, my friend's Ferrari, pulling out of the driveway. And I said, oops, I almost crashed my $400,000 Ferrari into my like $600,000 tank. But it got 100, 140,000 views. Yeah, so it was stupid. It's interesting for me that you're now talking about opening a shop and going into your passions. Because I think a lot of people that are they're broke or they're trying to get started. Everyone has this belief because we're told we're sold this idea of like, you're the main character in a movie fairy tale, follow your passion, follow your dreams. And that works for some people. But I think there's a lot of people that they want to be rich. They want to be entrepreneurs. They want to be successful. There's a lot of boring ass jobs that can make you tons of money. It's not your passion, but like make your millions and then fulfill yourself with your passions. Yeah. And I think that if I was to do it again, like I wouldn't want to, but I probably want to get into like either commercial real estate or investment banking and investment making sucks. It's a living, like it's, it's like the rat race. Basically it's really bad. You work really long hours to make maybe 90 K to hundred K a year, but it's really bad. But if you just like work longer and work harder, the, the longer you're in it, you just end up managing like a, like a billionaire hedge fund. You make like 300k a year or a couple million a year and it's what's crazy is nowadays connections that you need like i remember when i was younger i was always just had my mind dude if i made a hundred thousand dollars a year like i'll be a physical therapist i'll make 130 grand a year nowadays when i hear that like i'm nowhere near that right now like to be transparent like i have a lot of work to do but it's funny now like even now me hearing that i'm like that's not that much if you make 100k in california you're broke yeah. I think you have to make 100K. That's like, that's if like you make 100K a year, you were making 60K a year <laughs> with like, taxes. No, no, literally, like, it, like the housing comfort, like they're at the average house, is like a million dollars. Like you're literally broke if you make 100K in California. Yeah. San Diego is the same thing. If you make 100K in San Diego, you're broke. It's crazy to think that. I mean, obviously, certain parts of California are different. You can make less in certain parts, but most of it, like most of Los Angeles, if you don't make 100K a year, you're probably broke. This goes into what we were talking about earlier with, um, Damn, I just drew a blank. Well, we were talking about something earlier. Oh, yeah, like going to college to like get certain jobs. Even those certain jobs when you go to college, okay, you're making $200,000 a year. And that'll be sick. And like you can have a decent lifestyle still. In like 20 years, 200000 might be the new 80000 mm-hmm. versus what we've talked about this whole podcast of like your own businesses, your own big entrepreneurship goals. Like if you're, if you learn how to make hundreds of thousands in a month, this whole inflation thing, it doesn't exist to you anymore. I'd say like people that really want to have a passion, let's say you have a passion in cars, bro, quit your job. Only if you have money though. Like if you have money, if you don't, like if let's say you live at home, quit your job, find something you're passionate in. If you want to build out a shop, you got, I mean, you got to have money for that, to be honest. 
unless you just leverage it from like business credit or credit. But like, bro, you can quit your job. You can find something that you're passionate in cars. Let's say you cars, you can do car photography, car videos, editing videos, uh, promoting cars for other people, uh, for other companies, running their social media pages for just cars alone. There is countless things that you can do for just cars. And you can do the same thing with like real estate or like home decor or stuff like that. Just like if you treat it like a, a nine to five at first, I promise you in the next like couple of years, it's going to be what the nine to five will be paying in a year and a couple months. So you're saying like people, there's still like the option of people like pursuing a passion, but it's just be more open-minded about the routes within that, in that passion that you could go. I know a few people that were taking photos of just cars, like freelance work, just not even getting paid for it. They take really nice photos of cars. They're like their own photographers and they just post to Instagram. They have like 10 K 10, 10 to 15,000 followers. And then Lamborghini notices them. Then Ferrari notices them. Then they want to have that person fly out to wherever their, their little car shows are. Like, um, what is it called? Mac Malibu or something like areas like that where they have like, uh, crazy car shows that fly you out. Cause they want to have your photos taken or you want to have, they want to have you taking photos of their cars because they like your, the quality of your stuff. One of my friends, Will, he had a photo that he took post on BMW USA. He had just a photo they took and wow. paid for it. Post on BMW USA. And that's just like getting your foot in the door. Like, in it, bro, imagine you build a portfolio where you have photos on Lamborghini, you have photos on BMW, Ferrari, McLaren. Like, bro, you build a por- portfolio for ph- photography, like for cars. You could approach any company you, with that resume. Have, and you could have your insane rates. Let's say yeah. you pay $1,000 for one car. Bro, they pay it because you have McLaren, you have Lamborghini, you have yeah. all these other companies. But it takes time. Like, one thing people don't understand is like you're not gonna have fast money. If you wanna have fast money, you have no drugs probably. I mean, you can get fast money from like dropshipping, but to be honest, like drugs where you can make fast money and then you can get caught and then you make no money because yeah. you can't get a job and you're a felon now. Yeah, so, I think the idea of this like I think get rich quick exists, but it's not in the way everyone imagines these overnight. They took one move and it's a success versus what I'm seeing around and what I'm also seeing is like what I need to do for myself is like build these processes that you do and these ways you go about pursuing your goals and stuff. And like eventually you open up the probability of that event happening and then you're making the money. So people from the outside are like, Oh, like, okay, get rich quick overnight success. But it's like, no, I've been putting in this time for like months, years. And, and now I'm not, reaping it's the not rewards. Four hours a day of work. It's not eight hours a day of work. You want to get rich quick, put in 16 to 18 hours a day. That's like three days combined of work, and that's how it would, you know, it would like suit the process. But if you really want to make a lot of money fast, the money that you'd be doing, let's say like you have like an 80-hour work week, have a 90-hour work week. That's working even harder and working even longer. And I mean... And are you talking about people that have like trading their time for money jobs or people pursuing... No, like work on their own. Okay. Because you can only make so much yeah. at a 9 to 5. Let's say you work 40 hours a week at a 9 to 5 and then 40 hours a week on your own business. I think that's the first step in like a lot of these like breaking out of the matrix entrepreneurs that you realize I don't want to trade my time for money. And if I'm going to trade my time for money, it's like an hour of my time makes me $10,000 type thing. Bro, take six months, focus on the best version of yourself, work every single day, wake up early. Like it's like the like stereotypical like entrepreneur mindset videos that you see, like the freaking daily routines, wake up early, take a cold shower, they just, preach it because it works. Just do something in the morning. Make yourself productive. Don't get on your phone for like two hours. Unless you have emails to do. You can get on your laptop because you're not going to scroll through social media or Snapchat on your laptop. Answer any emails that you have. If there is any. If there's not, find a way to make yourself have emails. Because otherwise, like, you're not, you're not going to have much stuff to do. Otherwise, so, you can write your goals out for the day or the week. And mm-hmm. you try and complete those goals. I mean, there's some... Just eat breakfast. Most people don't eat breakfast in the mornings. Yeah. Like, make yourself a cup of coffee. Like, become it's a like coffee It's like when Jordan addict. Peterson says... Start with making your bed. Yeah, that's Start what it cleaning your room. You'll get out of bed, you'll take a shower, and you won't even think about it. Then you get into your bed, like, oh, man, I wish I made my bed. It's just so messy. But it's getting into the habit of doing things that like, actually benefit your mind. Because now, like, oh, your bed's made. You don't have to do that. Oh, my, my room is clean. And yeah. it just it helps clear out your mind, I feel like. Because, like, for my apartment, my apartment's always spotless. I have bad OCD about that. Like, I want to make sure it's spotless. Otherwise, I feel like it's a distraction to me. Like, oh, my, my bed's not made. I need to go make my bed. I agree. I'm always, Crap, I, I always make quick. better videos or I get motivated to make videos when my apartment's like, really it's clean. almost like sounds to me for some reason. But it's like, let's say there's just stuff out next to me. It's like a sound. Noisy. It is. Yeah. It's, it's hard mm-hmm. to explain unless like, no, I know what you're you actually mean. in that space. It but annoys you the same as like some random blaring static would annoy you. Yeah. 
in your workspace. Yeah. That's perfect because I was literally going to ask you like what your advice would be to people that made it almost to the end of this podcast. So basically you're saying, and this is exactly what I'm doing. So you need to watch my other videos. He, what he said, self-improvement. Everything starts with self-improvement. You got to get your mental health. You got to get your discipline, everything. And that will lead you in becoming the type of high value man that is going to become the successful entrepreneur, money breadwinner type people. Also, if they're like 16, 17, 18 watching this and they want to have a relationship, I would say don't because I, I mean, I wouldn't, I don't want to say anything on my current relationship, but like, bro, if you want to get a relationship, find the girl that's going to help push you. That's like, if she sees that you're slacking in the gym, like, Hey, like you're looking small today. Like you better get back in the gym. You're looking too small. If she sees that like, you're not working hard enough. Like, Hey, like you're, you've only worked like 40 hours this week. What's up with that? Find those kind of girls. If you can find those girls, then like, bro, your life would be ten times easier. Yeah, it's like they're investing. No, I'm not saying you do. have to, but if they can find that now versus just wasting time on another relationship that's not gonna have benefit from that at all, yeah. then it's just gonna be like a toxic relationship, just the typical teenage relationship. Yeah, and you're seeing the girl as an asset versus why most kids watching this are seeing girls as like something they get to like put their pee pee in. And it's mainly like sexual and it's mainly validation. And most men are pretty feminine, they want that emotional connection. Versus I think you need to go full into making money, self-improvement, this and that. And you will become, when you become a high value man, you can attract any girl you want, perhaps even multiple versus like settling early on. And you have this huge distraction, taking that out of the equation or at least very much managing it to where maybe you're like casually, you're approaching girls, you're talking to girls, you're building that confidence, but you're not, it's not taking up two plus hours of your day. You're not going out to eat every night. You're not cuddling for, you're not watching Netflix with a girl three hours a night that you should be on your laptop grinding, doing something. So yeah. And also if you do have a current girlfriend and you think that she's the one for you, if she doesn't respect the hustle, she's not the one for you. Yeah. That, that's going to wrap it up guys. I just want to thank Caleb for coming on the podcast. Comment what you think of this long form con uh, content. I don't think this is not the Kenny Bender podcast or anything. I'm uploading this on Kenny's fit. If you want me to have Caleb back on because We've really only talked about like now you're established. We have all the entrepreneur e-commerce, whatever stuff. We can kind of talk about bro, anything that next baseline, time. Bro. That was literally just that was just the tip. We yeah. like they have yet to see the shaft or the <laughs> balls. But thank you for coming on. Everyone needs to subscribe. Now we need to make a thumbnail. <laughs> nice. A casual two and a half. Bro, that was awesome. Yeah, no, that was like I'm I'm like surprised how easy that was.